Johnson running right the room off the left hand side. He's still at his feet. Scores the touchdown. And he's going to go the distance for a touchdown. Welcome to the Sports Fever Television Network Game of the Week. I'm Dave Shannon along with Hugh Conrad this week. Hugh, thanks for joining us and we're excited about this Saturday afternoon game here at Tom Music Stadium. Absolutely, we're seeing the, the best rusher in the area running back. Uh, the, Ling is from Conemaugh Valley, over a thousand yards rushing against a pretty good Conemaugh Township team. Both of these teams are worried about the postseason, Dave, and Conemaugh Valley, they, they have a good shot at it. Conema Township, they, they're pretty much a lock, but they want to get as high a seed as they possibly can. So this is a big game for both teams. Both teams coming in with a 3-2 and two mark. And once again, one of the things you'll notice in today's football game is the relatively small size of the roster for the Conema Valley team. The Blue Jays, uh, really, it's got to be tough on these kids, You Absolutely. They have 18 dress from what I counted on a quick count, whereas Conema Township has 36. It makes a difference. The temperature's not as bad as it was a couple weeks ago when it was 75, 80 degrees, but still, players wear down. So that is a challenge always for Conma Valley. They had only 22 on their preseason roster. Now, obviously, this doesn't hurt uh, Ling as far as his running goes, but what's that do defensively as this game wears on? Because you're on both sides of the ball, obviously, with a smaller roster. The difficult part is for the linemen. They're, from tackle to tackle, they have to block for Ling. They must have a pretty good line. We haven't seen this team before. They must have a pretty good offensive line or he would not have over 200 yards a game rushing. That's an incredible amount. He's quick, he's a good runner, but they got some blockers up front. They do wear down, as you say, though. That's, that's the danger in the second half for the Blue Jays. All right, so we'll see how many points the Blue Jays can get up on the board in the first half and then see what the Indians can do in the second half. It may turn out to be that type of a game. You'll want to stay tuned throughout the course of this one. It's the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Reaching, caring, inspiring, teaching. Every day, APSCUF faculty members of the 14 state system universities are making a difference in the lives of college students throughout Pennsylvania. We try to develop a positive attitude in our students, something, something that they can take with them out into the workforce. I believe that all students have this potential within, and they just need somebody to motivate them to move forward. Committed, dedicated faculty. APSCUF, helping to provide an education that works. Low-fat cheese sandwiches on whole wheat bread. Chewy and good for you. Snacks high in calcium help build strong bones. And foods rich in fiber are good for your heart. So you have the power to dominate. Can your food do that? Run, throw, think, eat better. Find out more at smallstep.gov. Ah, it's a great day, isn't it? Yeah. Too bad your boat's gonna sink at 11.05. Don't come closer. I have rabies. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of serious complications. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. I did not understand what kind of mortgage I was getting. I don't want to lose my home. Don't ignore the problem. Contact the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. For 35 years, we've been the one for housing help. Don't be embarrassed if you didn't understand the papers you signed. You're not alone. Qualified homeowners can refinance their mortgage to payments they can afford. To get started, contact PHFA at 1-800-822-1174. Welcome back to Thomas Music Field, and we are at Conema Valley High School, the home of the Blue Jays. Hugh, uh, it is uh, certainly good to be here, and it looks like the weather is going to cooperate. There have been times uh, since we've been here already this morning and early afternoon when the weather looked like we may be socked in with fog and not even be able to see the field, and now we have some beautiful sunshine. 
that is coming down. Beautiful day for a homecoming game. And I think it's going to be a very interesting game against the two the two Connemaws, Valley and Township. As and you see there, uh, the WPAC uh, records both at uh, three and two coming in. Now, we do not have these updated as of the Friday night games. We're taping here on Saturday, but uh, this is an important game for these two teams at three and two. Absolutely very important because with Connemaw Valley, they have a very good shot at making the District 6 single A playoffs and they have this game and then Portage. So you're, you're talking about an undefeated team next week. So that's going to be a challenge. And, and uh, so you really want to try to get a win here today. I'm excited just to see this Steve Ling. I have heard so much about him. He's averaging there over you see 200 his, uh, yards a game. Can you believe that? Yeah, the, the stats you're looking at, that's for four games. Uh, we don't have the uh, fifth game stats included there. Also, uh, as far as receiving yards, Kyle Sambanini, uh, son of the head coach of the Panama Township Indians, 138 yards per game. And uh, let's see, Steve Ling, you see there uh, at uh, 60, uh, 66. Um, okay. And uh, Brett Byers uh, from Panama Township, the sophomore, with 56 tackles on the season. So uh, also you see Kyle Zambanini at number two in the West Bank with uh, three interceptions and Matt Jones from uh, Connemaw Township with two. But it's uh, going to be the, uh, the rushing of Ling, so I don't know how many opportunities they may get at an interception here today. Yes, it, primarily you have two different teams, two different offensive schemes. You're going to be seeing them running the ball when you have the Blue, Blue Jays having the ball with the Indians, of course. They're going to have a much more diversified offense. They, they throw the ball and they put guys in motion. Uh, Coach Sam Zambonini actually was a, an assistant under Jerry Davich, who Jerry had been at Johnstown, and he was also at University of Idaho. He has, has a great background. So he learned from a pretty good offensive master. So we're going to see the Township Indians get the ball first here. Connemaw Township is ready to receive the kickoff from Connemaw Valley. And you may want to forgive us because we're just going to go Blue Jays and Indians the rest of the game as the kickoff goes to the Indians, taken at the 20, out over the 30, 35, 40 and finally brought down by a host of special team tacklers led by Jesse Unkefer for Connemaw Valley making the stop. Well, we'll see now what, what the township is going to do. Are they going to air it out right away? It's going to be interesting to see what kind of scheme they're going to try to use against the Blue Jays. Matt DeRay, the quarterback for Connemaw Township, coming out onto the field as he got the final instructions from head coach Sam Zambanini, and we're set to go with the first offensive possession of this afternoon's game. Game of the week on the Sports Fever television network. DeRay turns and hands off out over the 45-50 into Connemaw Valley territory. And rushing the football, Seth Zaman. Zaman picks up about 14 yards on the carry, almost uh, yeah, just about 14 gets a first down, first and 10 at the Blue Jays 45. They came out with an eye, kind of a little crooked eye with a slot to the left, and they ran to the slot side. Usually you run to the tight end side, but they must have seen something in the, maybe in the films of the Blue Jays that they felt they could, uh, you know, they could maybe do this. Same thing, except for the opposite way. They're over on the right side this time. Matt DeRay, pretty impressive in size at 6'5", ball carrier Seth Zaman gets over the 45, down to about the 43. He'll pick up a couple to set up a second down and eight. Got to love a 6'5", 220-pound uh, quarterback <laughs> yeah, at the helm. Nice, nice size. Any of you coach loves that, especially when you want to throw the ball around a little bit. Second down and eight. Look at Tom Marshall observing his Blue Jays here on a homecoming Saturday. We think Tom's been here eight years. Eight years at the helm, uh, he succeeded John Jacoby back in 2000, 2001. Man in motion is Kyle Zambanini. And the handoff once again goes to Zayman. He gets down over the 40 to about the 38-yard line. They're still going to have about three yards to go to pick up a first down on third and three. Yeah, they like that eye, the power eye, and you try to get in there and, and give it to the tackle and go off the, the off the, give it to the tailback to go off tackle, and uh, that brings up about a third and three. Uh, so they they're using a, a really interesting offensive scheme. Good running here out of the eye, but they also use the slot, so they may may fake it inside, maybe throw it. Well, Matt Jones out there is a wide receiver along with Kyle Zambanini. 
And the handoff, though, goes to Zayman. He's going to pick up almost the first down. Not going to say for sure. We'll wow. have to wait here for the referee to come in and uh, make a call. I'll tell you, that's going to be inches away. I No, the, the spot is right on the line, and they'll probably bring it out. Well, I'll tell you what, Denny Grambling, the uh, referee, is uh, going over and calling for the sticks to be brought out. Nope, yep, nope, he's, he's called the first down. He called the Doesn't first down. Doesn't need to see it. Yeah, it's right on the line. He just had to see whether it was right in the middle of the line or on the end of the line, so it was real close. All right. They needed three, they got three, and it sets up a first and ten at the Blue Jays' 35-yard line. 9.50 left to go here in the first quarter. No score in the football game. First possession of the afternoon going to the Kanama Township Indians. There you see quarterback Matt DeRay calling the signals. And the handoff. Good for about three yards. And uh, carrying the ball that time was Jared Nana. Nana picks up, we'll give him four, Hugh. Yeah, give him four. What they did is a little counter action there. They've been going to the tailback. They faked it to the tailback and used the counter back. And I, I thought I saw a guard pulling or a cross blocking there. That was a pretty good first down play, and you get four yards. The coaches are pretty happy with that. No doubt. Second down and six, Kahnemaw Township moving the ball rather uh, efficiently here in their first offensive possession. Handoff goes to Seth Zaman. Zaman gets around the corner on the left side and is brought down at about the first down yardage in around the 25-yard line. Needed to get to the 25, and they've done it again. Bad, uh, once again, really efficient with uh, the way they're running the offense. <laughs> yes, they're, they're getting exactly 10 yards on, on each of these last two possessions. That's unbelievable, incredible, right on the line, making it easy for the officials. They're, they're moving the ball rather easily right now, and that has to be concerned for Coach Tom Marshall. Let's see if he stays. He's in a five-man, looks like a 52 with, uh, I'm not exactly sure if they're going on with a man or a zone defense there uh, in the secondary. Matt DeRay, and back behind him, Seth Zaman. And the pitch goes to Zaman over the right side, down over the 20. He's got first down yardage again, and this time, they get a little more than 10. We'll get them 11 yards on the carry that time, and another Indians first down. And a very impressive drive here. They, in, what I like about Zayman is he's able to cut back. He start, it's almost like the old student body right that they used to use when John Robinson was there and O.J. Simpson before he was a criminal he used to get into that. <laughs> you know, before those years, I loved O.J. He, he is my favorite guy. But he, he ran that. He probably was the best runner I've ever seen at cutting back like that. I'm not going to say Zayman's as good as O.J. was on that, but he reads very, very well. That's certainly a timing thing, which uh, actually a lot of guys at the pro level don't always get right off the bat. No, they don't. First and 10, ball at about the 14-yard uh, line, and the handoff down over the five, and in for a touchdown. Jared Nana, the ball carrier, and uh, an Indians touchdown makes it 6 nothing. Connemaw Township. Yep, just the same little counter action inside. He cut right through the middle, and that was pretty impressive drive, Dave. Yes, uh, there were really no mistakes throughout the, the course of that particular drive. Everything went according to plan as far as Coach Sam Zambonini is concerned. And as you say, probably a point of concern for head coach Tom Marshall of the Blue Jays. In to attempt the point after is Emery Mock. Point after attempt, plenty high enough, plenty long enough, and plenty good. And it makes the score, Connemma Township 7, Connemma Valley nothing. Let's take a look, uh, if we can, at the uh, touchdown run. And there you see Jared Nana getting in as he drags about uh, four or five Blue Jay tacklers with him. The, the good part of that was he had excellent blocking at the line. At the, line. at the point of attack, he, he really did well. And that was an impressive drive for Connemont Township. They went, it was an eight play drive, 57 yards. Uh, that was very impressive. And that certainly has to be a concern for the Blue Jays because they scored a little bit too easily on that. And they, they had the ball not quite for half the first quarter, but they took about five minutes and 12 seconds off the clock. And that's impressive too. As Hugh points out, about 7.48 left to go here in quarter number one and a 7-0 Indians lead over the Blue Jays on the Blue Jays' homecoming weekend. See uh, in a really depleted roster, number uh, 42 down there, John Palaliak, 
uh, not able to play. His ankle, uh, from what I hear, is a problem for him. Uh, it's, a, it's a concern when you have small schools as trying to get enough kids out for the game. Now, one thing I did notice on their roster, they had seven freshmen. If you can keep those numbers coming up, you're going to have better numbers than they have right now. But it's, it's a tough game. It's hard to get kids to play football right now because there, there's discipline. You have to work year-round practically. And, you know, there's, there's a tremendous commitment for it. You have to give these kids credit. Emory Mock, after the successful point after, will kick off for the Indians. Gets it high in the air. It'll be fielded at about the 12 yard line. Out over the 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Taken out of bounds at about the 37 is Anthony LaRue with the return. Yeah, nice return there. It looked like there, it was really clogged up the middle. He, he made a nice move, got to the outside. Gives a pretty good field position, 35 yard line to get started. Absolutely. Yeah, they're gonna mark him uh, Right about dead on the 35-yard line. I thought he got a little bit past that, but here we go. Straight smack on the 35. First uh, offensive possession for the Blue Jays and an important one. I mean, a methodical drive by the Indians scoring that first touchdown, and we'll see if the Blue Jays can answer with one of their own. And Already. we're going to get our first chance day to see Steve Ling. Look for number 23. Instead, it's going to be the quarterback, Cody Kushner. And Cody's going to be sacked. He's, uh, I'll tell you what, some good defensive penetration that time. And he's taken down, I think, by Eric Darn, number 64 of the Indians. And he lost seven yards. What happened there is he fumbled a snap from center. And I noticed they were having some trouble before the game when they were just running these plays with the exchange. I don't know if he has a different center or not, but that's that was the difficult thing. When you, you lose seven yards now at second 17, you really don't want to see that. And it's second down and 17, an important one here for Conema Valley. And the handoff goes to Lang, tries to find a hole on the left side, nothing doing. Good penetration again by the Indians' defensive line and the backs. Excellent penetration. One way of stopping Ling is to not let him get started. Got a little bit there, but not very, very much, only about a yard. So that, that's going to be a challenge now to try to, you know, try to open some holes for Ling. He's not going to be able to run without it. Third and long, Coach and this is going to be a critical one. Coach Sam Zamanini there, hollering out, uh, you know, the, the defensive schemes to his team. All right, big third down play. Third and 16, ball at the 29-yard line. They oh. need to get to the 45, and there's trouble with the snap. Kushner rolls to his left, looks downfield, lets one go for Ling, incomplete. Now again, we had a bad snap from center, and that really doesn't bode well for the, for the Blue Jays. So a drive that really went nowhere. Steve Ling unable to gain anything on the carry he had and a couple of uh, bad exchanges between uh, quarterback Cody Kushner and his center, and it leads to a fourth down and 16. And the Blue Jays will have to punt. Pretty good field position probably out of this uh, for the Indians. Jesse Uncafer to kick. Nice, nice mind kick. drive nice kick. Nice kick. And it hits at about the 32, 33 yard line. 40, 45, midfield into the Blue Jays territory. Could go all the way. Kushner tries to stop him. He can't touch down Indians. Wow. Wow, that's coming back though, Dave. There are a few, there's a little bit of hanky. There's some hankies out there on that field and I think it's gonna be an illegal block or a clip, something like that. So that's gonna come back. That's a, a tremendous return there. Yes. Great return, but that's this one's gonna come back. Back on the 41 and there's one on the 44. So it may have been the same play. It may have been Yeah, I think it one. is. They're just moving the flag. Right, back. they're moving the flag now. It's illegal block in the back. Kyle Zambanini, there you see our referee. Denny Gramling making the call for the illegal block in the back. And that one will be marched back. Um, that block in the back, really, after you take a look at that run back, uh, Zambonini did most of that on his own. It was oh, unfortunate that that happened that early. Yeah, it, 
it usually have them there. There are our officials for today. Denny Gramley, you know well. And th th this is a good crew too. I, I have to say some of those. And Bob Hazlett's been probably there, an official for 30 years. Pretty good crew there. And Gary Scott, who is the line judge, was referee last night in the Central Cambria game that I had. Central Cambria and Forest Hills. A little shocker up there in Evansburg. It's a young Steeler fan there. <laughs> yeah, those Steeler fans. They gotta. We gotta hang in there, our Steeler fans. <laughs> All right. All right, excuse me. Second possession. Oh, wow. And uh, Seth Zayman. Zayman breaks it. <laughs> As he gets over midfield and into Blue Jays territory, brought down at about the 45-yard line of Kanama Valley. So uh, not, I'll tell you what, things are Looking tough here for the Blue Jays early. Yeah, 26 yard gain, 25 yard gain, and that's a you know it was a beautiful play. Uh, Zayman again, I'll emphasize, he really reads his linemen very well, and the linemen are blocking well too. They're getting a pretty good uh, surge there on the line of scrimmage, and you need that from an from an offensive line. Just so you know, uh, he came into the game with uh, an 82.2 yards per rushing uh, game. And uh, so I think he may be, uh, he's certainly on a path to exceed that here today. Carrying the ball that time was uh, Jared Nana, who scored the last touchdown for the Indians, and he does pick up about four. And yes, he did, and, and actually he, that was exactly the same play that he used before, a little counter trap that they used. Nice play, it keeps, them, uh, keeps the Blue Jay defense from keying too much on Zayman. They have to run that inside, even if they only get three or four yards, they, that's still, it's a good call for their, the township offense. All right, second down and a Long six, short seven, if you will. And the handoff goes to Zayman, 40, 35, 30, cuts back, 20, cuts back again, 15. Zayman is probably going to score and will. Ooh, yes, he did. He just got in there. Cody Kushner tried to get him right before the goal line, but he was unable to ride him down short of the goal line. And Seth Zayman carries the ball in for an Indians touchdown and puts them up 13 nothing. Yeah, 14 yard score and Zayman really, uh, he reads well, cut to the left here. And let's take a look this at the replay to the left. And watch him cut back beautifully against the grain here. And he just good, has pretty good speed there, is able to get away from Zach Kushner there at yes. the end. And just is able to get over by a, uh, maybe an inch or two, got enough to get the touchdown. 41-yard touchdown. So it puts the Indians up by a score of 13 to nothing. Point after attempt off the leg of Emery Mock. Kick is up. Four of a line drive that time, but it's up and good. It makes the score. Connemaw Township 14, Connemaw Valley nothing. You're watching the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Reaching, caring, inspiring, teaching. Every day, APSCUF faculty members of the 14 State System Universities are making a difference in the lives of college students throughout Pennsylvania. I believe that all students have this potential within, and they just need somebody to motivate them to move forward. It's a matter of keeping the student engaged. Once they get there, the creative juices can just start flowing, and it's great. Committed, dedicated faculty, APSCUF, helping to provide an education that works. I did not understand what kind of mortgage I was getting. I don't want to lose my home. Don't ignore the problem. Contact the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. For 35 years, we've been the one for housing help. Don't be embarrassed if you didn't understand the papers you signed. You're not alone. Qualified homeowners can refinance their mortgage to payments they can afford. To get started, contact PHFA at 1-800-822-1174. Welcome back. It is the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network at Thomas Usick Field. And uh, we're right at Connemaw Valley High School. And the Blue Jays need to answer here, down 14 to nothing. Yeah, that was a short drive, 70 yards, but it was only three plays. And, and they really need to, boy, beautiful kick here. Yes, great end over and kick taken at about the two. Out over the 10, the 15, the ball is fumbled. Actually, I think someone went in there with a good punch and uh, yeah. punched it right out of the hands of Anthony LaRue. Yeah, that was a good hit here. So, uh, looked like he had a little bit of room, but they closed very quickly on it. So that that gives them, boy, it's only on a 13-yard line day. That's going to be a long drive here. This isn't exactly what the Valley offense needs right now. 
Well, what they do need is to get Steve Ling into his uh, massive uh, ground campaign that he mounts every week for the Blue Jays, and they need to do that uh, both to prove a point to the Indians and uh, maybe eat a little time here, and if they could get a drive for a touchdown, they're only down a score. Yeah, they're not too far back right now. They just gotta, they got to get a drive going here. Ling has to backpedal. Now he turns it upfield, but he'll only get back to about the line of scrimmage and maybe about a yard or two more. So, so far, the action for Steve Ling has not been good. He's been strung out along the line, and he's only going to pick up one. It's a second and nine. Well, that's exactly what Coach Sam and he wants his defense to do, to string him right. If you're running laterally, you know, from east and west and not north and south, that's what you want from an outstanding back. He only got about a yard out of that one, and that was because he had to go away from the hole. The hole was clogged up, and therefore he wasn't able to get in there. All right, there you see Coach Marshall taking a look out. This is a big drive for his Blue Jays. And that snap is right to Ling. Ling rolls to his right, turns it upfield, gets out to about the 20-yard line where he's taken out of bounds. That's going to be a gain of about seven, and that'll set up a third down and two. So that's the best offensive play of the game so far for the Blue Jays. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to get him out there on those corners because that's where he can make things happen. And now you have a third and short. They, you really need an, a good first down here and try to get this drive going. Uh, that was interesting. I, we have not seen Valley before, so we don't know whether they do that regularly, but that, that was interesting. That's a, a good changeup. That's it good. Is. And it, I'll tell you what, it shows a lot of guts too because there had been trouble uh, with the exchange. Once again, it's Steve Ling. Does he have first down wow. yardage? I think he's short it's by close. just a bit. Yeah, I think he's a foot or so short, maybe two feet. And let's see if he's going to call. They're going to bring the sticks in and take a say, look we'll, at it. We'll take a close look at this. What do you think? I'm not going to be Paul McGuire here, but I'd say maybe a foot, foot and a half. I got to agree with you. If I'm interpreting the uh, interpreting the sticks on the other side correctly. <laughs> yeah, by the way, to. tonight's game of the week is being brought to you by the Pizza Deli Six Pack at the corner of Franklin and Haines Street in Johnstown, where this week's specials include a 24 cut super stretch pepperoni pizza for just $12.95. I, and I know that's good because I had some before the game. Uh, but plus tax. How about a 19-inch Philly cheesesteak? Is that enough cheesesteak for you, Hugh? <laughs> I think I can handle All that. All right. That's nine and a quarter plus tax. Don't forget about the deli's famous Basile family hot sausage sandwich for the low price of two seventy-five. dollars Get your game on at the Pizza Deli six-pack. Proud to bring you the game of the week on the Sports Fever television network. Well, we got a fourth and one. We got very short and... Coach Marshall feels he has to roll the dice here a little bit early in the game, but yeah, they only need, I was about right there, Dave, about a just foot. Just about a foot. Yeah, just about a foot. Hand off to Lane. Oh, he's got it. Got it. He got more. it. First down. He gets out near the 25-yard line for a Blue Jays first down and a big one. So Tom Marshall's gamble so far has paid off. If nothing else, uh, managed to get them out. If they do not do anything else on this drive, they'll be able to kick, and the field position game will be a little better. Yeah, you need a good drive right now, though. That's the thing you, you really want to get for Connemont Valley. Take some time off and give Ling that ball and let him get out to that outside. I want to see him run a little bit. First down and 10. Quarterback is number seven. Cody Kushner hands off to Steve Ling. Ling tries that left side again, and... I'll tell you what, that has not been productive for the Blue Jays at all. Most of Ling's positive yardage in chunks has been to the right side and not the left. Yes, he's having difficulty. He, he sees the hole and all of a sudden it closes. This township defense has been pre, is, has really, I don't know if they have somebody mirroring him, shadowing him out there, but they've really been in his face. He doesn't have much of a chance to start. Does pick up a yard, so it was not negative yardage. It's a second down and nine for the Blue Jays, their second offensive possession. The Indians scored two times when they have had the ball offensively. There's a handoff to Lang this time right side, and I'll tell you what, that one was met immediately at the line. Some good penetration there. Mike Lissick uh, in on the stop for the Indians. Yeah, he got a few inches, and that's about it. You're going to make it about a third and eight. Yep. We will statistically give him a yard to make it third down and eight. There you see Coach discussing things with Cody Kushner, his quarterback. A 
I'll tell you what, Cody's putting the mileage on here, just going back and forth between the sideline and the huddle to well, get the play. It's one of the problems with, that you have when you have low numbers. Usually you'd use a lineman or a wideout or something to carry that play in, but you can't do that when you have numbers like that. You only have 17 players. Jeremy Sedano is split wide to the right. Kushner rolls, looks back, throws to oh. the left. That swing out over the 35 and will be tackled at about the 40, just over the 40-yard line. Another Blue Jays first down. Nice play. Nice play there. Kushner fakes, and he looks looks off to the right, and he finds Ling out there. I like that because you get Ling out on that corner again. Very nice play. Look at this again. Fakes to the right. Look at that. When he gets out there, he can move, and that's the kind of play that you really want. Again, you're seeing Cody Kushner go back into the, the huddle. He's going to have a few miles on just running back and forth talking to Coach Marshall. All but right, a first and 10, though, and they're at the 41-yard line. So after starting deep in their own territory, they're really chewing the clock up and doing a fine job so far offensively. Kushner with the pitch to Ling. Ling rolling to his right, no room to turn upfield, and he'll be brought down for a loss as he's brought down at about the 35-yard line. It'll be a loss of six, and a second down and 16 as the clock rolls under 40 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. And Township defense, you got to give them credit. They're stringing it out. They're making him go east and west instead of north and south. You want him to cut in. There was no place for him to cut back on that. And that's one way of, of stopping Ling, stringing him out, not letting him get to the line of scrimmage. We'll see if they try to the right side again because that's where they've been most successful. Now, the right side is the short side of the field this time for the Blue Jays. Nope, they're going to try to get Ling on the left side. And once again, some penetration by the Indians. He'll be dropped for no gain. It'll be third down and 16. Yeah, I'm not sure what the Indians are doing defensively. I'll take a look at them a little bit, but they're they're clogging that hole at the line of scrimmage, and Steve just doesn't have the time to uh, to look elsewhere. He has and nowhere to go. That will do it. That is the end of the first quarter. Your score, Economov Township 14, Economov Valley nothing. We'll be back to see if the Blue Jays can continue on a roll. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Reaching, caring, inspiring, teaching. Every day, APPS Cup faculty members of the 14 State System Universities are making a difference in the lives of college students throughout Pennsylvania. We try to develop a positive attitude in our students, something, something that they can take with them out into the workforce. I believe that all students have this potential within, and they just need somebody to motivate them to move forward. Committed, dedicated faculty. APPS Cup, helping to provide an education that works. I did not understand what kind of mortgage I was getting. I don't want to lose my home. Don't ignore the problem. Contact the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. For 35 years, we've been the one for housing help. Don't be embarrassed if you didn't understand the papers you signed. You're not alone. Qualified homeowners can refinance their mortgage to payments they can afford. To get started, contact PHFA at 1-800-822-1174. Welcome back to Thomas Usick Field, the home of the Economa Valley Blue Jays. I'm Dave Shannon, along with Hugh Conrad on the Sports Fever Television Network Game of the Week. And of course, uh, Thomas Usick, uh, quite quite the uh, story behind him, Hugh. Oh, yes, it is. I I can still remember. Now, I, I have to tell you this. He played at, at Conama High School, East Conama High School for the Iron Horses. And this was back in the, when I was one year old. So I'm going way, <laughs> way back. But I do remember him because he went to Michigan State when Duffy Doherty was a, and Biggie Nunn, I think, was there. And then Duffy Doherty. And then he played, I'm saying 14 yards maybe with the in the old AFL. He was a quarterback and he was a punter. And he was a punter when I can remember that back in the 60s. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays and a big one. Kushner avoids the pressure and is eventually and sacked. Thumped. And he may have fumbled the ball. Yes, he did. Uh, the, he fumbled the ball, but was it down? I think they would almost have to rule down. Yes, he was down. He down was by down. contact. As, uh, I think that was that uh, Zambonini that was in there uh, to force. No, I think it was Emery Mock. Now, wait a minute. They, oh, my goodness. They did lose they the did, ball. They, they, they did fumbled lose the ball. It was recovered by 20, I think. All right. And that, of Cushion. course, would have been uh, Kyle Zambonini with a recovery for the Indians. Wow. Here we got go a again replay with that to look replay. at. There's Kushner running up to the and line. And he knocked the ball out. Yep. And that was yeah, Zambonini. That was a fumble. No, no, number 70. I'm sorry, gave it to the wrong guy here. Number 70, it was a recovery on that. And that was 
Lysik. Lysik. Oh, my. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. Nice pass play that time as uh, Matt DeRay uh, passed the ball out off to his left there, and it falls incomplete. I'll tell you, it's just what the Blue Jays didn't need. Yes, exactly. Uh, a turnover yeah. deep in their own territory here at the 28-yard uh, line. Yeah, and the replay showed it was Mike Lissick, I think, got on that, and, and they just stripped the ball away from Kushner. So you have a second and 10 on the 28 now. Kanama Township. The Indians trying to go up by three scores here. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. And there goes your running back, Seth Zaman. Zaman is down over the 25 to about the 24-yard line. So he'll get a pickup of about four on that and set up a third down and six. Yeah, third down and six. A big one for the Blue Jays. They, they go up by 21 nothing. It's going to make it much more difficult. They need, a, they need a big play here. The Blue Jays have to come up with something. Third which, and six there, which Dave. Side, which side of the ball, Hugh, really takes more out of these athletes? Well, <laughs> I tell you, it's both. It's, the, it's not easy either way. And when you have only 17 players, that makes it very, very difficult for these players. Man in motion is Kyle Zambonini. The handoff goes to Zaman. He has a first down and more inside the 10-5 touchdown. Seth Zaman, the ball carrier for the Indians to make it 20 to nothing. And once he got by that initial penetration, Hugh, and got into the secondary, it was see you later. Yeah, he can read so well. He reads what the blocking in front of him, and, and he just makes the cut at the right time. Again, give credit, though, to that line, and the offensive line for Kahneman Township, doing a very good job in moving him around and giving him a chance to make those cuts. That's the thing that, that Steve Ling does not have. We'll take a look at that one again after we get the point after attempt by Emery Mock. 10.57 left to go here in the first half. Point after attempts, no good. No, it is good. Wow, just Boy, over yeah. the crossbar. <laughs> that barely got over there. But. So it makes the score. The uh, Indians 21, the Blue Jays 20, or uh, nothing, sorry. And you saw just, you see him cut back. He, he really reacts well, cuts back against the grain so well. Damon, another touchdown for him. All right, that makes the score. The Indians 21, Blue Jays nothing. We'll take this time out. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network. When you open a book, you can explore new lands, make new friends, and discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. Thought it was right around there. I did not. And Welcome you back. We are here at the uh, Thomas Usick Field, and it's Connemaw Township at Connemaw Valley. The Indians up by a score of 21 to nothing. Just for the truck there, we got the audio from the commercial really loud. <laughs> Thank you. 21-0 uh, lead, and it is time for kickoff here. As uh, this this might be, you hate to put this kind of a label on a Hugh, but this is pretty much do or die for the Blue Jays. they got to score this time. Yeah, they have to control the ball, and what, what has happened here is the time of possession is really in, in favor of Township, and you can't score if you don't have the ball, and so they have to put a drive together, get the ball to Steve Links, let him get some yardage here. He hasn't had much of a chance. And that's going to be LaRue on the return. Takes it at the 20, out over the 30 to about the 35. So he'll get 15 on the return. And it'll be Blue Jays ball, first and 10 at their own 35. It's been another thing, too. I'll tell you, the Indians have been real aggressive here trying to dislodge the ball. Yes, they have. And one of the things they do today that, that – perhaps back in my coaching days wasn't done as well as stripping that ball. And they see it on the, the colleges and pros. They teach that. And, and so these teams do a much better job of that. And that's what happened that last time. You know, you just that, that was simply a ball that was stripped out of there. All right, first and 10. Cody Kushner, the quarterback, man in motion is LaRue. And the handoff goes to Steve Ling. Ling is able to get back to the line of scrimmage and just a skosh over that. So we'll give him a gain of a yard just statistically, and that'll set up a second down and nine. And we were uh, looking forward to uh, seeing Steve Ling rip off a lot of yardage 
Yeah, you would have to say that the Indians have really done their homework here. Yes, and yeah. there's a timeout on the field by the Blue Jays. That'll be a timeout for us as well. You're watching the uh, Sports Fever Television Network game of the week. The score, Indians uh, 21 and the Blue Jays nothing. By the way, if you want a copy of this particular telecast, it's very easy to get one. All you have to do is call 814-534-8435, and you can get a DVD copy of this Sports Fever Television Network Game of the Week. Make sure your family and friends don't miss a minute of the big game with a copy of the telecast on the Sports Fever Television Network, just $20. There you see it. Call 814-534-8435. So the Blue Jays with their first time out of the game. Coach Marshall able to go out there. It's one of the nice things about the wireless communications that the teams have now. It gives the, the head coach a lot more mobility. Uh, I'll tell you a story later about uh, when I was coaching at St. Francis and the kind of without wireless technology, and we went down to Washington, D.C. <laughs> okay, that's got to be a good story. Here's Ling carrying the football, trying the right side, doesn't get much, maybe a yard. And that'll set up a third down and eight. And, and they are just the, the linebacker is the line for Connemont Township. They're allowing very little ling. He just can't get started. So I guess, uh, what did, did you guys forget to take some wires with you? There, no, you we see? didn't have the money. You know, we, you played at St. Francis. We never had any money for anything. It wasn't that. I'll tell you that. It's going to take a little while to do that. So we'll, we get a little bit more time. We'll talk about that. All later. right. Blue Jays are ready to go here. And this is a big third down and eight. Kushner rolls to his left, looks downfield. The pass is incomplete, intended for Dalton Uncafer. And it just goes out of bounds, and it's a fourth down. Now, last time Coach Marshall gambled on a fourth down play, but it was uh, fourth and about what, one? Yeah, well, they're it not going to. It was a short uh, yardage situation. Yeah, they're not going to gamble here. They have too far to go. Yeah, so they got to kick it away. Jesse Uncafer, uh, who will punt for the Blue, Jay, Blue Jays that is getting ready. Good coverage there on that pass. Ambonini was the, the corner it looked like on that play. Good, Very good coverage by and Township playing very good defense right now. There's the snap, a little bit low. Uncafer is able to get it away. And uh, it's taken at about the 32 yard line. Backpedaling, now turning it upfield to the 35, 40, 45. And taken out at about the 48 yard line is Kyle Zambonini. And Zamanini returned one for a touchdown that was called back. back. There are no flags out on this one. And they had a beautiful wall set up to his left. But they didn't get everybody, and, and they were able to, to take him down. But still, tremendous field position. You're on your own 49-yard line. That's where you like to start a drive. So it is a first and 10 for the Indians, who have just looked sharp on both sides of the football here, containing the Blue Jays and their leading rusher, Steve Ling and also very efficient on offense. 9.35 left to go in the first half. And there's the oh handoff to boy. Zambonini, 50, 45, 40, and drug down at about the 38-yard line of the Blue Jays. Tremendous counteraction there. You fake the ball as if you're going to your power to zame in your back, and then you come back against the grain. Beautiful block and beautiful play, and there was no end over there. I guess the contained man was out of there. I'm not sure whether he was out on the block or not, but that I'll was a you beautiful what, play. DeRay uh, really did a nice job there as quarterback with the fake. Yes, he certainly did. Beautiful play, beautiful execution by their QB, DeRay. First and 10, Indians ball at the 38 of the Blue Jays. There goes Zayman, 35, 30, 25, 20, turns it up, stops now, cuts back again. Fumbled, and, and he they, fumbles the and football. The, it's the recovered Blue Jays by the Blue it. Jays. Guess who comes up with it? Leading rusher, Steve Ling on Boy. defense. And they needed the big play, and Steve Ling comes up for one on defense. Nice play, and in that case, Zayman carrying it a little bit looser than he usually does, and uh, it was stripped away. We were just talking a little bit earlier about stripping the ball. There's an example of how you can do it. So the Blue Jays. Let's take a look uh, at there it again. Zayman look. makes this pause here, and he pauses long enough to and boy, look at oh, him. And it was Ling, the, the, Ling did the stripping on that, yeah. Dave. I, well, that was amazing stripped if you saw recovered. that. It was a nice cutback by Zayman. He looked like he had a big game, but again, Ling came up with a big defensive play. Some nice thievery by Ling. He carries the ball that time, gets out over the 15 to about maybe the, 
they're going to mark him out all the way to about the 18, so that'll be a gain of about seven to set up a second down and three. Yeah, a long six. And that was the that was first time really that on that play they've been able to get the blocking and he's been able to run. That's what they need right now. They need to drive to try to stem the, the offense for uh, – for the Township. Township's offense has looked very good right now. Also, suddenly, Hugh, 21-0 doesn't look so bad because it looked like the Indians might be on their way to making it 28-0, but instead, the turnover forced by Steve Ling. Kushner turns, rolls to his right. He's going to keep it, turns it upfield. First down and more. He's out over the 30, 35, 40, 45, oh, and, and he just tripped up. Broke it. What a great effort. Just a tremendous effort. He has tremendous speed there, too, when he turns it up. Best, best out. It was the best play of the game so far. 30, well, let me see what they've got. Maybe 28 yards on that play. Cody Kushner with a fine run. He's brought down at about the 47, and a great gain for the Blue Jays. So, Little defensive turnover there. Some great work by Steve Ling has uh, really energized this squad. There you see Kushner rolling to his right, eventually turning it up. Now he lets the Jets loose. And, and watch that That was that the last tackle. man. That was the last man on that two. He almost broke that for six, and boy, they need the six. I think that was uh, Jared Nana making the uh, oh. touchdown saving tackle. And a big one. Coach Marshall. Well, maybe just a skosh more relieved. Not a lot, though. He's got to see this one get into the end zone. Handoff goes basically up the middle over midfield and into Indians territory at about the 49-yard line. Yeah, that was that was a really good play, too. They they really have to get a drive together, get some points out of this. Uh, they're looking much better. Looks like the line has, has given them a few holes here. Gain of four in the second down and six for the Blue Jays. And there you see... <laughs> I'll tell you what, Cody's got to have, uh, have done a lot of conditioning over the course of the summer. Yeah, that's what you do it for, yeah, and you run those sprints in practice. Coaches coaches love them, and the players hate them, but they pay off. Here's the pitch back to Ling. Ling trying to turn the corner, and he's brought down. Nice tackle and pursuit by Kyle Zambanini. And they're just not letting him get out there. He got a few on that, but very little, just a little bit. So let's uh, be generous and give him a yard, set up a third down and five. Yeah, well, that's about right, and uh, he really got very little. On. They've been stringing that out, and, and that's the thing. He has to be able to cut, a, cut up in there and uh, to get a first down. And Best play so far for the Blue Jays, you a pass play to Ling, and then yes. the run by Kushner. Yeah, I like that pass play where he comes out of the backfield, takes one way, and then he, and he hit him out of the backfield. That was the best play up to the run by Kushner just a few minutes ago. All right, big third down and five. Let's see if the Blue Jays can keep it going. Hand off to Lang. He tries the middle and squirts Ooh, out, I'll uh, tell you what. It's close, but I think he's a little bit short, but this is where you go for it, too. Yes, definitely. He's about a yard short. Yeah. So he'll pick up about four and set up a fourth and a yard. Yeah, it is about a yard, maybe a long yard there. So let's see what the Blue Jays come up with here on fourth and a long one. Before, they did convert on fourth down, so this will be the second time this afternoon they've gone for it. See if they use Ling and or power, maybe stick with Kushner. Power eye formation here. Hand off to the first back through, and, and I he got it. it. Yeah, he got it. I, I'm looking at he, the, the the official on this side, on the on the side of the field. I think he does have it. They're probably going to have to measure on it, but I think he – ooh, boy, I don't know. He's going to measure it. Yes, there is going to be a measurement. I think he has it, but it's not by much. You know, again, that, that township defense has played very well today. Game of inches, and we're about to see just exactly how much. Yeah, I think he has it by the nose of the ball, Dave. What do you think? I'm going to I'm going to say he has it. Uh, boy, it's going to be close, though. First down. Nope. Nope, it's the other way. I was oh wrong. Oh, my. It's about a, it's, it's the nose of the ball short, so he didn't get anything on that. Wow. Well, one fourth down attempt works for the Blue Jays, and that one does not. That's, and it was worth the gamble, though. I oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, even if you, with a little bit of depth inside the Indians' territory, a good choice there by Coach Marshall. And once again, it'll be up to the defense to put a stop to the Indians. They're up 21-0, about six minutes and six seconds left to go here in the first half. 
And Zayman has looked pretty good, and he's probably be, uh, going to be upset because he fumbled that last one to, to set up the the drive there by Conoma Valley. See how they do here. I had, I think he had no idea that Ling was in behind him when he stripped the ball. From no, he him. didn't. He didn't. And the handoff goes to Jared Nana. Nana, right Nana up the middle. Gets, uh, out over the 45 to about the 48-yard line. So we'll give him a gain of, uh, let's make it four, second and six. Second and six. A little play inside there, and that was that was good play for them. Again, you need the defense for Conoma Valley to try to come up and, and make some penetration. Right now they're not making the penetration that they need to stop this offensive attack. And Township's offenses look very good. They look good both ways, actually. They've been able to pass, and they've been able to run, use multiple uh, running back. Zayman, of course, the biggest yard gainer, and he has the football this time out over the 50. Nice hurdle as he jumped over uh, one of the would-be Blue Jay tacklers and gets down to about the Blue Jay, oh, let's call that the 47. Yeah, it's going to be third and short again. Needs to get to the 46, so third and a yard here for the Indians. They've got about five on that. And one thing that the township has not done that I thought they would, they haven't been throwing the ball. You know, they just haven't thrown the football, which might be a good thing for, for Valley. I don't know if they may be a little fake here. What do you think? Third and one, would Coach Zambonini roll the dice here, a little fake inside? And no, I think Zayman's going to carry the ball. And yeah, it but it was, a counter, it was a counter action, but he, I think on the second effort he did get it. Yes. Oh, wait a minute, though. That's going to be a close one. Yeah, that one's going to be close, too. I'm not going to make a judge. Oh, that one he has. He has it. All right. Gonna measure and it they're going to measure it anyway. Well, I was wrong the last time, so let's see, <laughs> <laughs> see how we do on this one, Dave. But it, what, it, what they did is they they faked inside, and then they used a counter pitch, and, and the, the, the Blue Jays had that pretty well. They they, they helped him to one yard or so. Well, maybe even not a yard. Let's see what All they right. have now. Here come the sticks. We'll see if the Indians have made it. They're up 21-0, clock stopped with 4.33 left to go here in the first half. There you see the chains. It looks like he has it, and he does. Wow, by, by not much, but just the, the ball, the length of the ball there. Indians first down, first and 10 at the Blue Jays 46. Just enough by Zayman. And just got enough for it. He did a lot of that. Uh, he got a lot of that extra oomph. Uh, actually going backwards. Yes, he did. He did. He sure did. Now well, there's about four and a half minutes left here. Uh, I'm certain what Co Mar Coach Marsh wants to do is slow down this offense. Being three down is one thing. Of course, they'd like to get the ball back. <laughs> no doubt about that. Sure, they may try to be able to strip the ball here at some particular point, but tell you what, it's been a good job so far. Zayman, the ball carrier, 40, 35. Down to the 30, and finally a tackle is made. And that one made by Josh Malfer. And quarterback Matt Duray a little yeah, bit slow little, getting up. He's slow getting up. He's moving rather gingerly right now. So that's the first down. Good play there again by Zayman. He, he cuts so nicely. And again, the line of scrimmage, the, I can't say enough about the offensive line, the job that Township has been doing up front. Nick Croyle brings the play in for the Indians here. And we'll see how Matt Duray looks. Still kind of a little ginger yeah, right now. Yeah, still showing a little bit from that uh, knockdown before. Duray's back to pass, lets it go. The pass to Croyle, complete five touchdowns. Oh, he fumbled out of the end zone. It's a, it, I think it's a touchback. It is a touchback. Wow. He fumbled the ball into the end zone and out of the end zone. It was a touchdown. And what a heartbreak. The first play of the game in which they throw that pass, they find him wide open, go for a touchdown, and he fumbles it out for a touchback. Well, the Indians have tried the left side before, and uh, that pass was in, incomplete. This one was complete. Here you go. Here's your replay. There you see the pass complete to Croyle down over the five, and he, and he just loses control the, yeah. of it. And just lost it into, into that. Wow. I forgot about that other pass. Uh, yeah, they had one on incompletion there. But, boy, what a nice play. And I don't know exactly whether he just lost his concentration, exactly what happened. He fumbled it. He may have thought he was over the line or over the touchdown line near the goal line. It, it looked like he actually was trying to switch hands uh, as yes. far as uh, what he was carrying, and he just lost control of the football. That handoff goes nowhere again. It's been tough sledding here for the Blue Jays running game. 
And uh, Steve Lang just having all kinds of trouble here. Best play to Lang, as we had mentioned in the previous drive, was a little pass completion. Yeah, a little flare pass. I'd like to see it come back for it. It'll be second down, and we're going to have to call a nine because he did get past the original line of scrimmage there. Yes, give him one on that. Yep. Second down and nine. Hand off to Lang. Everything's bunched up there, and he's not getting anything. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, third down and nine. And there's just not no place to run for him. And then, and again, you could think about throwing down here, throw that little flare pass. You're a little danger when you throw that. Uh, you don't want anything intercepted either. And you have about two and a half, a little over two and a half minutes to go now, 235 and running. I think the best thing they can do at this point, Hugh, and I think the reason that Kushner was able to gain so many yards on his carry is they do have somebody shadowing Steve Lang. And I think they need to start exploiting that. Back to pass, Kushner. Let's oh, he's rip. open too. And he it's is the open. Lang, complete. Out over uh -oh. the 40 to the 44-yard line. I think we called that one, didn't we, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, and it was there, a nice pass by Kushner. Get it out there, first down, and you, you know, see what you can do on this. Going to have to open it up a little bit. Gain yeah, a 23 on it. They need to have that pass play work or at least somebody else to carry the ball just to uh, keep them honest. Look at the replay here. There nice little fake. Kushner back to pass. Nice pass. He leads him just perfectly. And he's brought down at the 44. Yeah, nice touch by Kushner. Very nice play there by the Blue Jays. And certainly Coach Marshall would like to see some points on the board here. They may have to throw to do that. 21-7 would be a lot better at halftime than being down 21-0. That's for sure. Clock under two minutes left to go in the first half. Kushner's in trouble, gets away from the would-be tackler. This time not, though. And a flag goes down, too. Not sure. That probably was a hold in the backfield. Uh, he was rolling to his left, and great pressure there by the Indians. Did get away from one of them. Right, but there were two there. They looked like an end on the linebacker may have been both. Oh, face, face mask. mask against I didn't the see that. Face mask, and that will be an automatic first down. Good break for the Blue Jays. Yeah. Here you see Denny Grambling. Now the high school rule the changed there, Dave. It, it, it had been 15 yards. They, they have a five for inadvertent face mask, and that's what they got. Even though they lose some yardage back there to the 36, it was actually a loss of eight yards. They get a first down out of it. All right. It is a first down and would appear to be about uh, 18 yards to go. Wing the ball carrier, turns it up over the 40 and gets out to about the 44-yard line, which would be the original line of scrimmage yeah, there, and a timeout is called. I was wrong, and I thought that was an automatic first down, and it's not. Yeah, I was wrong on that one, so they have to use, they have to take one of their timeouts here. I think this is the second one called here by the Blue Jays because they'll have one more. We're going to take a timeout as well. Your score, Connemaw Township. 21, Connemaw Valley, nothing. It's the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Reaching, caring, inspiring, teaching. Every day, Apps Cup faculty members of the 14 State System Universities are making a difference in the lives of college students throughout Pennsylvania. It's getting up and knowing that I'm going to make a difference. There is nothing like the energy that you get from students. Being a professor it's one of the greatest feelings in the world. Committed, dedicated faculty. Apps Cup, helping to provide an education that works. list of the tests you need, go to ahrq.gov. Welcome back to Thomas Yusick Field at Connemaw Valley. You did happen to miss one there, and a timeout is called by the Connemaw Township Indians as the game gets them out for a third down and nine, and they uh, did not go to Ling that time. It was uh, Alex Roberts, I think, that carried the ball. Right, and it got a few yards on it, so it make, makes a third and makes a third and nine. So Township figures, well, if they can hold them on this, force them to punt, they've been getting some pretty nice punt returns out of it, and, and maybe they can get someone up there. 
All right, so there you have it. Uh, time out on the field. That gives us a chance to talk to you about the Pizza Deli. I'll tell you what, some delicious food had by uh, us guys, fortunately, prior to the game. That included uh, part of that 24-cut super stretch pepperoni pizza. By the way, you can get that for just $12.95 plus tax at the Pizza Deli, corner of Franklin and Haynes in Johnstown. Also on special, that 19-inch Philly cheesesteak. Sub nine and a quarter for 19 inches of delectable tastiness. Yes, indeed. That was pretty good uh, pizza we had before the game there, Dave. And uh, don't forget about the deli's famous Basile family hot sausage sandwich, just two seventy-five. dollars Get your game on at the Pizza Deli Six Pack. Proud to bring you the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Looking out the uh, fans at the top of the hill here at uh, Connemaw Valley. Looking down on their Blue Jays, big third down. Hand off to Lang. One tackler is taken out, but I'll tell you what, nice pursuit there by the Indians, Jared Nana. Yeah, very good pursuit there, and they, they were able to stop Ling before he gets started, and that's what they've been doing uh, pretty much the whole game. He, he gets very little on him, maybe give him a yard on it, but that's about it. Another timeout then by, by Township with 1.20 to go. That's forcing the Blue Jays now to kick. So it's a uh, fourth down and eight. And uh, there you see the uh, punter for Connemaw Valley, Jesse Uncuffer, and he is out on the field. There will be a punt here. And this will be incumbent then on the Blue Jays special teams uh, to make sure that uh, Zambonini is unable to return this thing because yeah. we did see one <laughs> that one return earlier that was called back. Yes, it was. So you know they can do it. Yeah, they can do it. He may be telling him, just kick it toward the sideline, somewhere down in here, get, you know, get it down to about the 30, 20-yard line and, and out of bounds. It's a danger when you do that, but but he may be trying to do it here with Uncafer. I'll tell you what, see Coach Zambonini, he had some moves headed over the uh -oh. sideline. <laughs> Uh-oh, something happened. That was a fake. They were running a fake punt, and that's what they had. They were, oh, my goodness. But I, it, it was either a delay of game I'm not sure. Oh no, it's against Township. Wow. Is that illegal substitution? Yes, it was an illegal substitution. So that makes it, <laughs> well, that makes it interesting. Now the ball is in, down in Township territory. And there you see quarterback Cody Kushner. Now with 118 to go. I don't know whether they're gonna put that time back in the clock or not. And the official calling timeout by they're, Connemont Township. That's their last one. They're taking one. the third one. <laughs> they want to make sure, because that was a fake. It was a, 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 a little hike to the up back on that. Yes. And, and so they were they were running a fake. But unfortunately, Township had an illegal substitution. They had too many men on the field. All right. Well, if you'd like a copy of tonight's game on DVD, don't forget to call 814-534-8435. That's where you can order a copy of a DVD of tonight's game of the week on the Sports Fever television network. You can make sure your family and friends don't miss a minute of the game with a copy of that. $20, there you see the number on your screen, 814-534-8435. Your copy of the game of the week. Nice, nice haircut. <laughs> nice haircut. Hey, he has that hair, That young Dave, man and is styling. Uh, he has that hair. You know, some of us uh, That's like, aren't lucky Is that an official that. Blue Jay cut? <laughs> is that, that what that, you know, Blue Jay always has Blue a Blue Jay buzzer. Uh, I didn't so. cash my check that. Anyway, uh, let's see. Minute 18 left to go. Let's see if we can finally either come up with a punt, a fake, or <laughs> or a first down. Let's see. Well, they're going to go for it. They're not even going to fake the punt here. They're in a power eye formation, two yes, tight ends. Are. Snap to Kushner, pitches to Wing. Wing, and first down and more. 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, forced out of bounds. Oh my goodness, I thought he made it, but he, he was out there about the 17. Beautiful play. Finally, Steve Ling is able to show that speed that he has. Matt Jones with a touchdown saving tackle for the Indians. No laundry on the field. First and 10, Blue Jays ball at about the 17. Here you go again. You see Ling, and he just turns on the Jets there. And what a well, save. Just that, his foot was on that line just barely, too. I thought he had a touchdown on that. Beautiful play, beautiful cut by Ling. Now with 109 left, Conor Valley has a shot. You talk about saves in hockey. You've got to give Matt Jones a save in football there. Cody Kushner rolls to his right. Nobody out there, and he doesn't 
get that much. I thought he was well, going to cut it off bit. a little bit sooner, but yeah, Keith he, Myers is able to cut him down. Well, he got about five on it, but you're down under a minute now, and I think they have one timeout left, yes. according to my numbers. Yep. And and so you have a second and five. He wanted to get to the to the sideline, so he stopped the clock. Wasn't quite able to do that. All right, second down and five. We'll see what happens here. Kushner quickly going up to the line. Pitches to Ling. Ling will get down over the 10. They'll have to call a timeout yep. here as the clock's down to 32. 32 seconds. You're almost going to have to throw it a little bit here. But it was a nice play. It was it's not enough for the first down, but he wasn't able to break it, though. He's down to the 10-yard line. It was a gain of two. And they need to get to the eight for a first down. But, the, but uh, the clock is the main, yeah. their main enemy right now because that should be at 32 seconds. That, I think that's their last timeout. I didn't see the signal there from Denny Grambling, but I'm pretty sure that's their last. So neither team with any timeouts. And what a con bunch of confusion there on that uh, fourth down. A uh, number <laughs> yeah. of things happening for the uh, Blue Jays. That, all good on yeah. their on their side. Right. Uh, Coach Zambonini isn't going to be happy with that illegal substitution that gave them a little opportunity to get, get Ling the ball. That's not something you want, but, you know, it happens. It, you know, there's a lot of confusion. Uh, they, instead of kicking the ball, Conoma Valley was going to run it. So you have a little bit of confusion, and, and that happens with high school kids. There you see the fans right at the uh, crowd control rope there along the sideline. And you see Kushner stepping up. Rolls. Let's it go. Complete down. Oh, beautiful play. Beautiful catch. Complete to Dalton Uncover. And the Blue Jays are on the board. 21-6. Boy, just what the, the Blue Jays needed. They were down there and a beautiful fake there by Kushner. And he got to Uncover. Nice catch in the end zone. Beautiful play. That's just exactly what they were looking for with 26 seconds to go in the first half. Nice deep drop. A little bit of it. There it is. And Beautiful catch by Uncle yeah. there. And he shielded that defensive man from the ball, pulled it in. Nice play. Uncafer with a little bit of a height advantage over, I think that was Jared Nana that was defending him there and is able to pull it down. It's a touchdown for the Blue Jays. And that will put at least a little bit of a smile on the face of the fans here. Alex Roberts in to attempt the point after for the Blue Jays. Nope, they're going to fake it. Kushner rolls to his right. He is not going to be able to get in, and the score remains Indians 21, Blue Jays 6. But a bit of a moral victory there after that fourth down confusion that eventually led to a first down for the Blue Jays. They do score and uh, miss the point after. You got a little moxie in there, Step. You can see them running over here, a little bit more excitement than they had before. That's what you need in there. And actually on this kickoff, you're probably going to want to squib it a little bit and not let Zambonini get that ball game because he had pretty chance. good speed and you don't want to have them return something and take that that little moxie, that, that little mojo uh, out of their step. All right, so the uh, Blue Jays back into things a little bit here and you know, pass completion kind of opened things up a little bit there and yes, a little bit of confusion right. and uh, so the Blue Jays took advantage of the situation that was given to them. Yeah, I think what they're going to have to do in the second half, they're going to throw a little bit more because what's happening is Coach Stan Benini is putting about eight men in the box and pretty much saying, if you're going to beat us, you're going to do that simply by, by you know, they, they want to try to do that with a, um, you know, kind of a, a little pass here, a little play action or something. But they're, they're just keen so much on Steve Ling that, you know, it's really held his numbers down tremendously in the first half. All right, we'll see what kind of a kickoff we get here from the Blue Jays. I'm in favor of the squibber at this particular juncture. And it's Seth Zaman who is the uh, deep back here. Right, he is. And Zambonini's on the side there. Yep. I think you have Zambonini and Nana flank flanking right. him. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, they tried an onside kick. It's oh. Nice recovery. Nice try. It, it got the ball up in the air, but they just weren't quick enough. It went too far downfield for the onside kick. Scott, nice kick. Scott Thomas recovering for the Indians that time. So they'll have the ball with 24 seconds left to go. A 21 to 6 lead. They'll have it at their own 41. And we'll see if uh, Coach Zambonini decides to air it out a bit. Well, Duray can throw. He's shown that. He has a nice arm on him, so they're probably going to try something. I wouldn't be surprised. You're up by two touchdowns plus one PAT, so I wouldn't be surprised to see if he'd uh, air it out a little bit here. And you see quarterback Matt Duray making his way back to the huddle. 
DeRay uh, really got a pretty good shot there yes, on the did. previous possession. Right. And you know, he looks like he, he's okay now, but he's a little gingerly. You know, they're going out of a direct snap here, Dave. Yes, they are. All right, and it's going to be DeRay, the ball carrier. He gets down over the 45 to about the 46 yard line, and I think that's going to do it. I think the clock will be, nope, they quickly no, they're, uh, they're, get right back up there. They're trying to run. Ten seconds one. left just, to go. Just surprised they ran the first one, though. Yeah. And a quick turn and handoff to Zayman. Zayman's going to be short of a first down just across mis midfield. And that will do it. The first half is in the books. A nice drive at the end of the first half by the Blue Jays, helped by a little confusion, a little passing, a little of what Connemont Township didn't expect. So they do get their points on the board. We're going to go to halftime here. The score on the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network, Connemont Township 21. Conema Valley 6. I did not understand what kind of mortgage I was getting. I don't want to lose my home. Don't ignore the problem. Contact the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. For 35 years, we've been the one for housing help. Don't be embarrassed if you didn't understand the papers you signed. You're not alone. Qualified homeowners can refinance their mortgage to payments they can afford. To get started, contact PHFA at 1-800-822-1174. Personal foul, inactive activities on a glorious day. Huh? Let's get out there and play! Sweet. Ooh, freeze! When do I get to be in? Uh-oh. Hey, Reggie, frozen people can't talk. P an hour a day. I'm it. There are lots of great play ideas online, but don't stay too long. I present to you Algebra 2. Foreign languages. And finally, biology. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Me. Take on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. Reaching, caring, inspiring, teaching. Every day, Apps Cup faculty members of the 14 State System Universities are making a difference in the lives of college students throughout Pennsylvania. It's getting up and knowing that I'm going to make a difference. There is nothing like the energy that you get from students. Being a professor is one of the greatest feelings in the world. Committed, dedicated faculty. Apps Cup, helping to provide an education that works. Welcome back. We are getting set for a second half of football here at Thomas Usick Stadium at uh, Connemaw Valley High School, the home of the Blue Jays. I'm Dave Shannon, along with Hugh Conrad. Hugh, uh, an interesting first half. Uh, Blue Jays unable to get untracked until the very end of the first half. Yes, they were. And in fact, they, the Township Indians built a 21-0 lead and really stifled the Valley offense. But on the last drive, right before halftime, they finally got it together. And Cody Kushner hit Dalton Uncafer on a 10-yard pass. And so it's now 21-6. You have to remember, though, even though Township has three touchdowns, Nana has won 13 yards, Zayman has two, one of 41 yards, one of 24 yards, they also missed out on many opportunities. They had a, a, a punt return for a touchdown that was called back. They had a, a touchdown that would seem to be a touchdown where the receiver fumbled it out of the end zone. And they also had a strip by by uh, Steve Ling, and that actually prevented another one. So there were three possibilities there where Township could have possibly added more points. But you know what happens now is, is Valley, if they can get things going on their first possession in the second half, they can make a game out of this. Absolutely. Yeah, be within a score here if they can have a nice offensive possession right off the bat. By the way, we would like to uh, congratulate the homecoming queen selected this year at uh, Connemaw Valley High School. The Blue Jays selecting Zykea LaRue. She's the daughter of Sterling and Jacqueline LaRue of uh, Gothel Drive. Uh, Zykea is um, 
let's see, involved with SAD, a member of the Spanish Club, Secretary of the National Honor Society, Secretary of her senior class and student council, a member of the softball team and cheerleading squad. Zykea belongs to the uh, Minority Scholars Club, and her future plans are to head to University of Pittsburgh. Well, congratulations. And I, major in uh, physical therapy. Yeah, congratulations. I actually know her mother. haven't seen her for a while, but that's, that's a great for, for her to get that award. It's always a lot of fun for these kids to, at homecoming. You just feel a different energy. I think this is the fifth one I've seen in the last two weeks or something <laughs> like that. seems like a lot. It's that it's, time of the year. It's that time of year. I think, well, it's actually three weeks. So. All right. And the Indians will kick off to the Blue Jays to start the second half. The kick is away. And that's going to be Dalton Unkefer. He takes it over the 15, 20, 25, waits for some blocks, gets out over the 30, spins up to the 33-yard line. Nice return by Dalton Unkefer. After catching the touchdown pass, he returns the kickoff out to the 34 almost. And wow. a pretty good return, good field position. Again, what the Blue Jays have to do is they have to establish the running game. And I think they have to mix a little more passing with it than they did in the, in the first half because uh, Kushner can throw a nice ball. We've seen that. I think and Cody got some confidence there. Yes, Hugh, he did. He uh, seemed on a to. couple of plays. Yes, he did. He really looked good on a number of them. Uh, you know, he hit Steve Ling out of the backfield twice. And he rolls. He's back. He looks. Pass is complete to Dalton Uncafer as they pick up out over the 40 to about the 41 yard line. I think Co Coach Marshall was listening to us. They came out throwing right away. Nice roll out, he, he, a little play action fake. He rolls out a little bit and a beautiful pass right over the middle. Actually, it was pretty good coverage, but he put the ball right where he had to. Uncafer again, probably his best receiver. That'll be a gain of seven and a second down and three. Blue Jays ball at their own 41. So if they could make this maybe a 21-13 uh, or even if they go for two to make a 21-14. Let's see. They got to get it down the field first, and and that handoff uh, that time was not to Steve Ling. That was Alex Roberts, and Roberts actually picks up almost two. I'd say, yeah, right. I'm going to make it a third down and one. Third down and one. You know, this is one that they really need. Uh, ball on about the 43-yard line. They really could use a first down. Got pretty good field position right now. The first down would really help their spirits. Township, of course, they they have to stop this. This this is a big stop for them, and they got eight. They have eight men in the box. Handoff first once down. again goes to Alex Roberts, and he has the first down and a little bit more as he gets out to the 45. Blue Jays ball, first and ten. Nice carry, nice work by Roberts, and once again deflecting some attention away from Steve Ling. Yes, he is, and. Uh, the township defensive was really stingy in the first half. They dominated the line of scrimmage, but right now it looks like the like Valley's getting a little bit of their moxie back, and they've had some holes here in this first drive. First and ten, Blue Jays ball at their own 45. That handoff goes to Ling. He's going to pick up about three as he gets out near the 48 to set up a second down and seven. So Ling finally uh, gets a carry here. And uh, I think they're still keeping an eye on him. Oh, yeah, they, they, they're containing him pretty well. What Coach Marshall seems to be doing is he's using now that power eye formation. And they're doing a little bit better out of that than they were out with the wing and the flanker. So it is, he may stay in this. Of course, anxiously awaiting the first pass. Uh, see what kind of a pass play we get called here as we go along. No pass play here. Lane gets the handoff. Had a couple of blockers over there on the left side with him. But uh, good pursuit once again by the Indians, and that's been their strong suit here all afternoon. Yeah, their pursuit has been excellent, and they've been stringing Ling out, making him go east and west instead of that old north and south where you want him to go. So they, they have now a third and about, well, about seven. He didn't, seven, he didn't get yeah. anything on that one. I'm going to be generous and give him a yard. Yeah, I give him three on the first one, so I ah, guess I can't okay. do that. Statistically, Dave, yeah, yeah we get you. in those stats. I hear you. All right, a couple of re receivers split out wide here. And one of those is Roberts. He comes back to block the Oh, pitch to wing and taken down by Seth Zaman. Yeah, excellent play by the corner. Seth Zaman moved up there, and Ling just hasn't been able to turn that corner. I'll tell you what will work, Dave. If he can throw a pass, a halfback pass, an option pass, 
that is there right now because those corners are coming up fast. Yeah, good call, Hugh. We'll see if uh, Coach Marshall, the next time his Blue Jays have the ball, would uh, maybe go to that. It's fourth down and about 13 almost here for the Blue Jays. The ball at their own 42. Just getting the kick away is Jesse Uncafer, and it's fielded at the 26, out over the 30 to about the 35-yard line on the return, Kyle Zambonini. Zambonini wasn't able to get to the wall that time. Eh, he has decent field position out at the 35, but he wasn't able to reach the wall. I'm not real crazy about having a single man back on, on punt return. I really like having an, another one to help out on that first block, but that seems what everybody's doing today. Right, Coach Jake Jacoby? <laughs> I think so. All right. Eight minutes, 19 seconds left to go here in the third quarter, and the Indians up by a 21-6 count over the Blue Jays, their first offensive possession of the second half. Your quarterback for the Indians is number 10, Matt DeRay. DeRay turns, hands off to the second back. That's going to be a gain of probably about six, and that was Seth Zaman, the ball carrier. And again, he, he got a good push off that line again, and that's really what Zayman has been using. The, the line for the, the Indians has really been a difference in the game. You get a second and four, you, as a coach, you really like that. So uh, second down and four to go after that gain of six. This might be a passing. You, you may look at this as a passing down. Don't know if that's the way that Coach Zambonini will go. It's not. The handoff, I do believe, once again back to Zayman. Yes, it is, right up the middle. And it looks as though Zayman is out near midfield. He squirted out there. It looked like he was down right about at the first down yardage, and then he just kind of squirted out there in a nice tackle by Connemaw Valley to stop him from going any further. First and 10 at midfield for the Indians. Yeah, that was good, good surge by the line. And again, Zayman, boy, he reads those blocks very well. So this is going to be key here if the Blue Jays hope to get back into this game to start to put a stop to this particular drive. That handoff goes to Nana. Nana gets over the 50 and probably down. They'll mark him at about the 46, a gain of four, let's call it, and a second down and six. Here's an interesting formation there. They have what I call a crooked eye to the right, and then they have a slot left. That is something that he might exploit passing-wise, but Coach Zambonini doesn't seem to want to go to the air much. He's, he's really pretty much telling his linemen, we're going to run this football. Got him like, I have no idea how far Matt DeRay can actually throw the football, but as big as he is, he ought to be able to heave that thing a good ways. So let go of a couple of about 35, 40 yarders so far. Seth Zaman, the ball carrier, turns it up, 40. 35, 30, he makes that pause again and gets five more yards by doing it. Does a little dance there with Cody Kushner, who was defending the play. Cody eventually brings him down, but that little pause there actually got him almost five more yards. They're at the 25 and first and 10. And gain of 21, and a, again, it was really good blocking, particularly on the corners. They had a very good block on the Colorado Valley corner, and, and there it is, you can see that and he just here's that pause he pauses a little bit and he gets yeah you're right about five six yards extra with that pause he really follows his blocks very well and uh, is able to put the brakes on and let some uh, blockers catch up to the players Zayman again and he turns it up 20 almost first down yardage as he uh, got by the first tackler Jeremy Sedano and eventually was brought down by Zimba John Zimba Right. Yeah, he got nine yards on the first down. This kind of looks like a repeat of the beginning of the first yeah, half. Yeah, exactly what they did on the first drive of the game, if you can remember. They really took it the whole way down to score, and this is very similar to the kind of drive they had on that one. Second down and a yard, and this is definitely a passing down, if you feel that way, but no. Well, no, no, he's a little quarterback sneak yeah. instead. And uh, I'll tell you. Big Matt DeRay is able to get uh, about six yards on that carry as he gets in, maybe even more, as he's uh, marked down at the eight. Yeah, I think, wow. I think he did. He got inside the, you know, you're at the eight or nine yard line. I'm going to call that the eight. Nice carry by yes, it is. It is Matt DeRay and a quarterback keep. 
very, very much. He ran it quickly too. He got yeah. off there, and that's that center really snaps off the ball too. I have to look at him a little bit, but boy, he gets off the ball very well. And, and so it's a first and goal here for the Indians. Blue Jays got the ball first to start the second half, unable to do anything with it, and the Indians are answering here with a real, very efficient drive once again. DeRay pitches back to Zayman. Zayman turns it up at the five. Now cuts in for a touchdown. Yeah. Boy, that block. Boy, he on has the that, and he has that ability. He cuts with his blockers, utilizing his blockers. He loves to cut to back to the inside of the field. He likes to get out around the sideline and then cut it up. Yes, he does. Yeah, and it, that's a great read by him. There Not he every is. block can do it. Look at the way he cuts back on this. Just a beautiful cut, exactly as you described it. And, and that's something that I think is instinctive. You mm -hmm. know, you either have that or you don't. There's certain people have it and certain, certain people don't. And he does. He has the ability to read very well. Jared Nana with the block there that finally released him to cut it back up and in for a touchdown. Emery Mock into attempt to point after. Nice high end over and kick. That is good. And it makes the score. Connemaw Township 28, Connemaw Valley 6. You're watching the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. I did not understand what kind of mortgage I was getting. I don't want to lose my home. Don't ignore the problem. Contact the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. For 35 years, we've been the one for housing help. Don't be embarrassed if you didn't understand the papers you signed. You're not alone. Qualified homeowners can refinance their mortgage to payments they can afford. To get started, contact PHFA at 1-800-822-1174. Welcome back to Steve Usick Stadium, and uh, Tom I'm Music. sorry, Tom Usick Stadium, and uh, it is the home of the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. Sorry about that, Mr. Usick. Yes, there were many Usicks, and there are some Steves. I, think I know. There are at least two that I know. I know <laughs> one for sure. Are there two? They're both. One one taught at United, I think. Another one was out at Marion Center, if I'm not mistaken. But that Usick name is synonymous with with the uh, athletics here in the, in the Connemaw, Connemaw Valley. Yes, yeah. indeed. 5.09 left to go here in the third quarter, and the Indians have just taken a 28-6 lead. The Blue Jays unable to do anything with their first offensive possession. We'll see if they try to let Kushner show off his gun. That one's fielded by LaRue at about the seven-yard line. He's up over the 10, 15, out to the 20. He'll get about 13 yards on that return and set up the Blue Jays first and 10 at their own 20. Well, this, this is one where you really have to dig in and say, we need to drive right now. You, know, you can't allow them to get it, get into this uh, the same type of situation as you had in the first half because they, they drove the first two times they had the ball, they drove and got touchdowns. And so you want to really try to get it up. You want to get Ling, try to get him loose somewhere, and I'm not sure exactly how you can do it. Well, uh, we'll end up giving a 14-yard return to LaRue there as it's marked at the 21. Back to pass Kushner. He's in trouble. He's flushed out of the pocket. And as he's letting go of it, it is uh, incomplete arm pass. is hit, so it's an incomplete pass. But uh, I'll tell you what, that was a heck of an effort by Kushner to get away. I thought he was going to be sacked back there at about the 13-yard line, but he was able to – he showed a little bit of speed there. Yeah, he, he did, and, and if he were rolling to his right, he would have he would have been able maybe to get a, away from that. When you're rolling to your left and you're a right-handed quarterback, you're throwing back across your body, and you really can't see that well, so it makes it very difficult. He was just fortunate to get rid of the ball. And the passing completion sets up a second down and 10 for the Blue Jays. We'll see if they end up uh, attempting a pass again. I just really think they they need to score quickly here. And it's going to be a pitch back to Ling. Ling's over the 20, 25, out to the 30. First down, Blue Jays. I think he has the first down. Yes, he does. He has it. 
by and, a long shot. Yeah, you got to buy about a yard here. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> now, wait there. The, the spot over there, they still, he's going to measure. Nope, he's, no. he's the first down. You're no. right, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Now, what he did there, he went to the left, but notice how instead of trying to get to the outside, he cut back against the grain. There was a hole in there, and he was able to do That's, I think, what he can do because what Conor Township is doing, they're spreading them out. They're stretching the field. If he cuts back, he's going to have some room, and I think he could have some success doing that. All right, one of the better ground gains this uh, football game for Steve Ling coming in, averaging over 200 yards a game on the ground. And that handoff going to one of the upbacks that time. That's Zimba, Zimba, the ball carrier. John Zimba carries it, and he does pick up about, uh, I don't know, three, let's call it. Right, a gain of about three. Make it a second down and seven. Just a little bit of a... You know, change up there for the yeah. Indians, giving them a little bit of something to think about. Right. Yeah, it's it's a situation where you really try to get a, a long drive here going, and you want to get Ling and see if you can get him loose, you know, because he can score from anywhere in the field. But you have to have the blocks. He can't do it without having any kind of blocking to do that. Now, they're in a power eye formation with a split end here to the right. And there is Ling with Ooh. the football, and he's taken. What a nice tackle Beautiful. in the backfield by Jared Nana. Nana, and he is tough. He is just, a, he's been, I, he's the person I thought might have been shadowing Ling, but, you know, it looked like that was going to open up a little mm -hmm. bit, and all of a sudden Nana just shut it down for him. Really nice defensive play. Yeah, he's had a nice uh, afternoon both offensively and defensively. No gain in the play, and it's third down and seven as the clock rolls under three minutes and 20 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. So far, the only scoring in the second half is that from the Indians to make it a 28 to six football game. It's a big third down for the Blue Jays. Pitch back, oh, Lane looks to pass. Hugh had called for this and it's incomplete. <laughs> Not the best pass from Mr. Link, Steve unable uh, to complete it. He intended it for Alex Roberts. Actually, I think he could have run that one. <laughs> he, may have, <laughs> he may have had enough room to run that one, but I like that. If he's, he may not be the best passer in the world, but they're coming up. That in, in that situation, because it was four, third and long, they're going to be dropping off on it. But I think on a first and 10 or a second and 10, you might be able to use that. So Jesse Uncafer will be called upon to punt once more for the Blue Jays. Second possession, no doing for them. And he gets the kick away. It's a nice high one. Zambonini is back. Takes it at his own 26. Oh, that wall's over. The, oh, there's a block. And, block in the back. And there he is ripped down. Nice uh, special teams coverage that time. I think that might have been uh, Chris Katachik with a special team stop. Nice and, play. Yeah, and the wall was there, but boy, they were able to penetrate. It was all set up, and Conor Valley was able to get them through there. And, and one of the players there from Township was almost ready to, to hit in the back. But he didn't. He, he Here's pulled back. Another look at it. Okay. As a nice high punt watch, gets away. Watch the wall to the right. Look at that wall over there. He gets out there, but this is where I, I thought there was the guy who made the tackle there. Who was that? Uh, that was Katachik okay. that made the stop, and uh, Luke Mitchell uh, was right on him there, spun him around. I thought he was going to block him, but he didn't. It was a good no call. There was no, no penalty there at all. First and 10, Indians ball with their own 30, and the handoff goes to. Number 34, Seth Zaman. Zaman still running. Wow, what an effort by Seth Zaman. He's out to about the 46-yard line on that play, a gain of 16. Yeah, that was that was outstanding running. By uh, I can hear the, the partisans here at Conoma Valley. We had a we had a tackle better. You know what the problem is right now? Just look at some of them. They're tired. They're really tired. And uh, that may lead to why Josh or John, that is Zimba, is down on the field. He is unable to get up. And uh, he gets some attention out but, there. But look at look at these players here for Conor Valley right now. They're just tired. Yeah. And that's the problem with not having any depth. It, it just, they, I mean, they've got tremendous heart and they're playing as hard as they can, but they need a break. All right. And speaking of breaks, we'll take one, two. The score, Conor Township 28, Conor Valley 6. It's the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Reaching, caring, inspiring. Teaching. Every day, APSCUF faculty members of the 14 state system universities are making a difference in the lives of college students throughout Pennsylvania. I believe that all students have this potential within, and they just need somebody to motivate them to move forward. It's a matter of keeping the student engaged. Once they get there, the creative juices can just start flowing, and it's great. Committed, dedicated faculty. APSCUF, helping to provide an education that works. 
I did not understand what kind of mortgage I was getting. I don't want to lose my home. Don't ignore the problem. Contact the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. For 35 years, we've been the one for housing help. Don't be embarrassed if you didn't understand the papers you signed. You're not alone. Qualified homeowners can refinance their mortgage to payments they can afford. To get started, contact PHFA at 1-800-822-1174. Welcome back to Thomas Usyk Field. Just getting up and getting off the field is John Zimba, and he's over on the sideline being attended to. I'm Dave Shannon along with Hugh Conrad. Happy to be with you on this game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. And uh, there's the handoff to Nana. Nana gets over midfield and into Conema Valley territory. Jared Nana has just done a nice job this afternoon. A couple of great defensive plays. He spells Seth Zaman so that uh, the Blue Jays can't just focus in on Zayman, who's been the leading carrier for the Indians, right. and uh, just a nice uh, afternoon for him. Yeah, a little counteraction that they had used earlier. He scored a touchdown on that in the in the first half, and, and it keeps them honest. You're right, and, it, and it, instead of going with Zayman, I think we have another timeout. Yeah, there's a timeout taken by the Blue Jays, and we'll take a timeout as well. Your score is Conema Township 28, Conema Valley 6. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Reaching, caring, inspiring, teaching. Every day, APSCUP faculty members of the 14 State System Universities are making a difference in the lives of college students throughout Pennsylvania. We try to develop a positive attitude in our students, something, something that they can take with them out into the workforce. I believe that all students have this potential within, and they just need somebody to motivate them to move forward. Committed, dedicated faculty. Apps Cup, helping to provide an education that works. Welcome back to Thomas Usick Stadium. It's the home of the Conema Valley Blue Jays, and they're having a rough go of it here this afternoon. Just calling a timeout here, I think, just to regroup and get reset, even though they uh, did take a little bit of a pause there as John Zimba was unable to get up, but I guess who's back out on the field? Yes, you know what it was, too. I, I'm, I'm glad to see it. I was afraid it was an ankle, but it was just uh, when you have this heat like this, Dave, and they're playing that much, you get all these muscle spasms, and they, they get tight muscles. And I've never got those. I guess I didn't have the right kind of muscle on. <laughs> all right. Back to pass. Letting it go. A struggle Ooh. for the ball. It Let's see who they say has it. It's they an did. interception. Great interception Sticking by Kushner. It. Cody Kushner Great comes down with coverage. that pass from Matt DeRay. Excellent coverage by Kushner. The ball was put on the money. It was right there, but Kushner was right behind. And what a great play. He just wrestled the ball away from him, and then that was just outstanding Here defense. Here we go. Look at this. Now watch DeRay's the end of this. pass. He just wrestles Kushner it away. Kushner rips it right away yep, from him. He had it away from him. Unbelievable. Now, I Gets think Township may be complaining over there. Oh, we, were, we had that ball. But I think Kushner got the ball away from him. Nick Croyle, the intended receiver for the Indians. And uh, in that particular wrestling match, I guess we'll give the two-point takedown to Cody Kushner. Yes, indeed. <laughs> First and 10, Blue Jays ball at their own 27-yard line. And there's Ling with the carry up the middle this time. He gets out over the 30. Just a bit past the 30-yard uh, line. I notice what they're, the defense the Township is using now is a six-man front. And whenever Conemaugh Valley goes into that power eye formation, we have everybody in that backfield now. They're putting six men on the line of scrimmage, two men inside. So they're putting eight in the box when you do that. Now that means that you have single coverage on the outside with any of their receivers. But notice where they are right now. They have six men on the line of scrimmage. Those two linebackers are very tight. And it's going to be hard to get yardage through there with that type of defensive alignment. Alex Roberts, the ball carrier, spelling Steve Ling that time. And he does pick up a couple of yards there, gets out to about the 30, let's call that the 33. So give him a gain of two. And that will set up a third down and a long four here for the Blue Jays. See what they can come up with there. They're again in that power eye formation. Both ends are tight. And it's going to be Kushner with a keep. 
He tries to turn it upfield, waiting for some blocking. Gets a little bit, gets out over the 35, may have the first down. No, depending on where the short. side judge comes out and marks him, Ooh. he's about at the 38, that's, and that's about where they needed to get close. to. It's very close, and that was tremendous second effort on Kushner's part because the corner there, and I think it was Ambonini, came up, forced him inside rather than letting him get to the sideline. He got it. What a great play by Kushner. That, and, again, you need plays like that. Eight seconds to go in the third quarter. It's going to be last play of the third quarter here. So a great effort by Kushner and a little bit of a moral victory for the Blue Jays here. Down 28 to 6, clock rolls, and it will roll out. And, boy, the Blue Jays are happy to see that. That will give them another break here. That is the end of the third quarter with the score. Conema Township 28, Conema Valley 6. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. I did not understand what kind of mortgage I was getting. I don't want to lose my home. Don't ignore the problem. Contact the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. For 35 years, we've been the one for housing help. Don't be embarrassed if you didn't understand the papers you signed. You're not alone. Qualified homeowners can refinance their mortgage to payments they can afford. To get started, contact PHFA at 1-800-822-1174. Welcome back to Thomas Usick Stadium at Conemaugh Valley High School. I'm Dave Shannon along with Hugh Conrad. It's the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. There you see the Conemaugh Township Indians as uh, they are on defense at this particular point. The Conemaugh Valley Blue Jays uh, about to uh, get back out there. And as we talked about in the pregame, this is just a tough situation for a roster this size to go all four quarters, especially against a, a pretty uh, a team that has some depth in Connemont Township. Yes, I, I had counted, and I may be off a player or two, but I, I counted 37 when Township came out on the field. So they have 37 players, and you only have 17, and, and that, that's really tough on, on it. Steve Ling, the ball carrier that time with a nice little gain, gets out over the 40 to the 42. And it's a gain of four. And they have a little bit of a problem here with their scoreboard as I uh, don't know if it came unconnected or exactly what happened. I'm sure they uh, will just go ahead and keep the time in the field if they're, oh, things are coming back up. All right. Uh, he's, he, the, the ref will have to tell you how much it was though. 28-6. Now, well, just leave it go. He's, he wound it, so. All right, here we go. There's Ling. He's going to be dropped for a loss, perhaps. I don't know. They may the, say uh, he uh, got back to the line of scrimmage. So that's going to set up a third down. Yeah, the clock is running now, but it was having difficulty before. So yeah, it blacked out completely, but... Uh, Scoreboard operator, there you see it. It's all back up and running. 28 to six, clock counting down from 11-15 now. We'll have to go in the football game. And a big possession here for the Blue Jays. It's third down and five. Kushner pitches back, Ling has it. Tries to turn it upfield and once again that pursuit that's been there all afternoon is there once again. John McTonic is able to take him down. And Kyle Zambonini was there. It, there were three men, and, and they're just they're stretching it out and making it very, very difficult for Ling to get any kind of uh, momentum. And, and he can't make a cut, so he, he actually loses probably a little bit there. Yeah, he does. Uh, uh, probably about two, two yards, yards yeah. Sets up a, a fourth down and seven. And another punt on the way. Kyle Zambonini retreating for the Indians to receive. And... Uh, Jesse Unkefer 
the punter. Watch that wall to the left side on this one. Zambanini goes to his left, looks for his blockers. He's out over the 40, 45 midfield into the Blue Jays territory and taken down at about the 38-yard line, maybe mm. the 37. A couple flags are down, Dave, over there, and it, he's going to get a pretty good return on it, but I think they're they're lined up about the 43-yard line of Conway Valley, so that's going to come back. Seth Tony was able to finally bring him down, and the flag is there at the 43, 44-yard line, yeah. and it is against the Indians, so right. they'll mark that off, and they'll start... Uh, Illegal block in the back. Ten and yards back. Yeah, that's a ten-yard penalty. I'm really impressed with Kanama Township almost, in almost every aspect of the game. They've had that wall every time. It's just a matter of getting there, and they had it there and made some a really nice turn. I mean, it's really difficult for these players not to hit somebody in the back. It's just, it, it, well, you see it in a college and a pro game. So that's all you see on those, those returns anymore. 46-yard line of Connemaw Township. That's where the Indians will start this drive. Man in motion is Kyle Zambanini. The handoff goes up over the 50-45, down into uh, Blue Jays territory to about the 34-yard line is Jared Nana. That boy has had an excellent game this afternoon. Yes, he has. Gain of 20. Township, uh, again, give credit to that line. Nice blocking on this. There Watch you go. It. And, and he accelerates pretty well for a fullback, but he, he runs pretty hard. Yes, he does. A little stocky runner. Maybe the Steelers could use him then tomorrow night. What do you think? <laughs> uh, they could use anybody right now. Yeah. I heard someone on the postgame show that said that maybe the only way they could get a good running back is if they went to a, went to a see who was out on parole. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Ball carrier is Seth Zaman, and Zaman. Uh, picks up a couple there as he gets down near the 30-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 31. That'll be a gain of two and a yeah. second down and eight. Yeah, got a little bit on on that, too. Yeah, the, it, it's there a shame. You see the have. Blue Jays on the sideline, of which there are not many. Yeah, well, you've, you've got to give credit for these kids when you only have that many. It takes a lot of heart to play on a team like this, but they play hard. Six players on the sideline, and uh, the seventh one is injured. Zayman again, the ball carrier, and a couple of Blue Jays teaming up to stop him there, including Dalton Uncafer. But it is a gain of about, give him a gain of four there. Mm -hmm. Set up a, a third down and a, a long four for the Indians with the ball at the Blue Jays. Uh, we'll call that the 27. Again, they come out in a slot formation with a kind of a crooked eye to the right this time. And there's the handoff, and that's to the first back through, which is Jared Nana. Nana gets uh, up to about the 25-yard line, so they're going to need uh, about a, a long yard, maybe two, to get the first down. That's about a yard and a half. A yard and a half in there. Uh, that was, again, that little counter action that they have to Nana. They run that really well. So Nana and Zayman, the stars of this afternoon's game, offensively. And it's quarterback keep. I think they may have stopped him. They're trying to pull him back, and he's trying to surge forward. And I'll tell you what, DeRay may have won the battle there. Yeah, he got a, a good effort at the second, at the instant there. And I'm not sure where that ball is. It, it looks short to me right now, but I'm, I've been wrong on these I don't before. Know. I they don't may know. have had it now. Yes, if it's. Yes, it's a it first is. down. It's a first down. Yeah. We got it. Second effort by Matt DeRay yeah, that was at 6'5", 220. He was initially stopped there. And coming in to try to pull him back over the pile was sophomore Brandon Cook of Connemaw Valley. But I'll tell you what, he lost, uh, lost that battle. The 6'5", 220-pound quarterback was able to drive forward. Yes, he was. And it was a good second effort there because they did have him stopped. You were right. It was short. But, you know, good, good second effort on his part. So the Indians continue to move the football up 28 to six and probably about set to put this one away. There goes Nana again as Nana gets down over the 20 yard line to about the 18. Yeah, one thing that I was talking to former coach, Jake Jacoby is in, in here. We were talking about it. They use a, an unbalanced line here 
and that Connemaw Township does, and it's interesting to see that. That means they have only two men on the other side of the line of scrimmage. If you want to look at that, I think they're in it right now. What do you think, Coach? Yes, it is. They only have two men on the on the left side of, of the, the line center. of scrimmage. Yeah. And the handoff goes to Zayman. Zayman is down over the 15 to uh, somewhere between the 14 and the 13. And he needs to get about another yard there, and that will be another first down. So the homecoming for the Blue Jays is going to be uh, somewhat squelched here by a pretty sizable Connemaw Township victory. But I'll tell you what, these kids never have anything to hang their heads about. Oh, no, they, they played hard. You know, it's just Connemaw Township right now is looking very good. Coach Zambonini has to be very happy with the way they're playing, looking ahead to the postseason playoffs. They're looking pretty good. Big Matt DeRay turns, hands off. The reverse. There's that reverse Touchdown. again. This time to Kyle Zambonini, and he's in. Wow. That's the same play they ran before. And uh, Kyle Zambonini gets in for a touchdown, and the Indians go up by a 34-6 to score. Uh, beautiful play. There was no contain by the uh, Conway Valley defense on that side, and I would Here it is. Yeah, you know, look at it again. There was nobody there. There should have been an end off there and even a corner, but again, it was the faking. The execution to the right that side, it was outstanding. And Zamanini just, he's good, good speed. He's a nice player. So Zamanini makes it a 34 to six game. And to attempt the point after, Emery Mock to make it 35 to six. And the kick is up. And it is good. In through the somewhat crooked goal post. As you can see, there's a little bit of a lean there on the right upright. As you're going a, lot the of, a lot of wind comes up the valley that way. <laughs> yes, indeed, they do. All right, so that makes the score. Uh, Connemaw Township 35, Connemaw Valley 6. We'll take a time out here on the Sports Fever Television Network. Reaching, caring, inspiring, teaching. Every day, Apps Cup faculty members of the 14 State System Universities are making a difference in the lives of college students throughout Pennsylvania. It's getting up and knowing that I'm gonna make a difference. There is nothing like the energy that you get from students. Being a professor is one of the greatest feelings in the world. Committed, dedicated faculty. Apps Cup, helping to provide an education that works. of the tests you need, go to ahrq.gov. Welcome back to Thomas Usick Stadium at Connemaw Valley High School. There you see, I do believe, our homecoming queen in the shot. And uh, that, again, is Zykea LaRue. And uh, congratulations to Zykea. Very happy day for her, certainly, and her family. And speaking of LaRue's, there's Anthony as he takes the kickoff. And he spins around at about the 15-yard line, leans forward to about the 17. And that's where the Blue Jays will start out trailing 35 to 6. And there you see Anthony heading back to the sidelines, hobbled a little bit there, too. He's kind yeah, of limping like on the twisted, way back. Twisted a little bit on that return. There's a real treat coming up for you here on this uh, telecast on the Sports Fever television network as Hugh Conrad is about, to, uh, well, we have a timeout. Well, timeout we'll by Connemont Township. We'll though. have to make some money instead. We'll come back for Hugh's story coming up. We're going to take a timeout, and the score is Connemont Township 35, Connemont Valley 6. It's the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. I did not understand what kind of mortgage I was getting. I don't want to lose my home. Don't ignore the problem. Contact the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. For 35 years, we've been the one for housing help. Don't be embarrassed if you didn't understand the papers you signed. You're not alone. Qualified homeowners can refinance their mortgage to payments they can afford. To get started, contact PHFA at 1-800-822-1174. their babies to go. 
gun crimes. You'll always be your mother's baby. So before you commit a gun crime, think about who you'll leave behind. Gun crimes hit home. Welcome back to Thomas Usick Field. We're at uh, Connemaw Valley High School. Dave Shannon, Hugh Conrad. Uh, time out there by the Blue Jays of Connemaw Valley. And uh, the young gentlemen need as many breaks as they can get here as they try to wind this one down. 6.03 left to go in the football game. And a fumble on the play. Well, they got it back. Connemaw Valley got it back. They the Blue Jays get it back. And that's uh, Cody Kushner, who's had a really nice second half. And now he recovers the fumble there by Steve Lang. Yeah, just, so just, it looked like a, a little problem with the exchange on that one. And uh, th this makes it hard, too, when you have uh, your quarterback has to come over here. Even getting the play off in 25 seconds is, is not easy. And uh, as we said earlier, Cody's going to have his work out here by uh, the time the game is done for the Blue Jays. He's put a lot of miles on between the huddle and the sideline. And as you noted, I mean, you, they just don't have the personnel to have somebody shuttling the plays in. Wing has his legs go right out from underneath him there. I don't know so much as he was stopped there as he uh, was trying to make a cut. Yeah, he's trying to make a cut back there and wasn't able to turn on the field, sort of slipped. Uh, you're getting to the point of the game with only five minutes to go, 35-6. Makes it pretty hard. These guys are tired. I can still remember the, what it used to feel on the day after a, a football game. Hmm. Uh, my high school years were a few years ago. Because I'm over 30 now. Slightly. Uh, slightly, yes. <laughs> a few years over. Just encroaching over the age of 30. Yes. <laughs> 444 left to go in the football game. Here you see Cody Kushner. Kushner is back to pass. Going to let one go deep. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Steve Ling. Not such a bad idea. What the heck. You know, give one of those kinds of plays a shot. It's fourth down. Right. And it's good coverage there by the the Indians and, and really other than the the scoring drive for Connemaw Valley right at the end, end of, the of the first, first half, half this Connemaw Township defense has played an excellent game they've really played well uh, now they have quite a few reserves in there at the time you, you know it looks like there are there are a few clean jerseys out there not all of them but there are a few nobody deep Uncafer has a little bit of trouble with the snap and finally does get it away Hits at the 40, rolls back over the 50, and down to about the Indians' 46. And that's where the uh, Blue Jays will touch it, and it'll be Indians football first and 10 at their own 46. Now, Hugh Conrad, uh, coach of the St. Francis at that time, Frankies. Oh, they were, we were the Red Flash. Oh, then. you were oh, Red Flash, yeah, too? This was, I'm talking about the 1970s. It was not really like it's ancient history there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, it, you know, yeah. I grew up with them being the Frankies. Yes, I know. I did, too. Yeah, they at one time they had a, a wrestling program. They had a kid by the name of Poncho Andrews. You remember that guy? He was, he was a great runner for that St. Francis Red Flash. And he was the guy that started the game of the week, actually. He, he's a great guy, and he was a great back. Coach Art Marnuska used to talk about him quite a bit. He said he called him uh, Poncho. I'm, uh, he probably doesn't like it. <laughs> that was his nickname. He was a great runner. Uh, there's a penalty here at the end. It's going to take it back to the 30. What I was going to tell you, Dave, was that we were playing down at Catholic University in 1978, I think. Uh -huh. And we, we didn't have phones. So what we would do is we would take phones from the security department at St. Francis. The oh, police, okay. police phones. We'd go down there. So we're in downtown D.C. in a not very nice area. And we would be getting police calls on these phones. For the D.C. police. Yes, for the D.C. police. <laughs> and, and Father Jonas McCarthy, who at that time was an assistant coach and a teacher there, uh, he said, boy, I don't know whether we're, we're legal in doing this. I said, just think of what, what those people on the other end are thinking, what we call, you know, I slot I right, tag left. 36 power, and what happens on that? Just think what they're, they're probably thinking. Oh, there's a drug deal going down somewhere. We, they're using lingo. We don't know. So that was, we always laughed about. We just didn't have money for, for phones. I mean, it was just one of those things. But we, we had a lot of time. It was a great time during that. It was an assistant there with uh, for six years. And just think, these poor coaches nowadays will never have that story to tell their <laughs> no, youngsters. They you no, know? they won't. Right now, uh, St. Francis is, is a little better. I think our our budget, the last year I coached there in 1985, our budget was $19,000. Most high schools had a, bu a better budget than that. <laughs> I was getting uh, $1,500 a year 
and recruited 40 players. It was, it was, but it was a great time. I enjoyed it very much. By the they, way, you uh, saw up there the uh, pizza, pizza deli. Deli. Yeah, we'll talk about the pizza deli coming up as uh, Connemont Township gets ready to go. But they have some weekly specials that you really need to check out, including uh, that 24-cut super stretch pepperoni. We had some of that. Our crew here for Game of the Week had some of that before the game. That's just $12.95 plus tax. 19-inch Philly cheesesteak, nine and a quarter plus tax. The Basile Family Hot Sausage Sandwich, $2.75. It's the way to get your game on at the Pizza Deli six-pack corner of Franklin and Haynes in Johnstown. And a new quarterback in the football game here for the Connemaw Township Indians is George Bivens. And Bivens hands off, and uh, the Indians are going to try to be uh, – the good visitors here and just do what they can to run the clock out. Yes, and they we're just over four minutes to go. Uh, good performance by the, the Connemont Township Indians. By the way, uh, I was saying Poncho Andrews, his name was Alan Andrews, is what he goes by today. Uh, Coach Martinuski, you saw his call him Poncho. He was quick. Boy, he was a quick runner. And so we had another back by the name of Teddy Housel, who, who set all kinds of records at St. Francis from Johnstown High School. Here's seeing your new quarterback, George Bivens, hands off once again. And there's a flag oh, there's at the end flag. of the play. Oh, and the oh, ball comes ball out. Ball squirts and, uh, out. He's gonna All fall. kinds of crazy things going on on that yeah. play. Uh, that's probably, it was thrown where there's a holding. So it's probably a holding or there was a face mask, either one. No, it was a face mask. Face mask against the Blue Jays, a first down for the Indians. Yeah, and so the clock stops there with the uh, penalty. 3.34 left to go in the football game. Turning into a beautiful day here at Thomas Usyk Stadium. Yeah, I'll tell you, the nice thing about this particular day, Hugh, even though the sun's out, it's still cool. Uh, now, I'm sure for the for the young gentleman down there for Connemaw Valley, uh, it's probably been pretty hot for them. Yes, it's and in the 70s probably. I would guess it's in the 70s. Sir. And you see a number of the starters there now down on one knee. And uh, ball carrier there is, uh, let me see, Brent Byers, I think, number 30. Sir. And so Brent Byers gets the ball over midfield into Blue Jays territory at about the 48-yard line. Well, Coach Zambonini has to be happy with his Indians. They really have looked impressive today. Uh, you want your team to be peaking as the season goes on, and, and they certainly are. This will get them to four and two, and the Blue Jays will drop back to an even There's three and three. There is Co Coach. He's wearing his shorts today. Hey, we like that. He probably would be wearing shorts if it were 20 degrees exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> Doing a little styling. Yes. Tough guy styling. Ball carrier that time, Jordan Troyer. And Troyer is uh, ripped down for a loss of about two. Takes it back to the 49. The Blue Jays have to travel to Portage next week, so they got a, a real battle on their hands with that one because Portage It's always is, tough to play the Mustangs uh, there. And they have so much depth. Uh, Coach Gary Goss was a former player of ours in the 70s at St. Francis. So he, he's had a very nice career there. And, and the Mustangs are hoping to go pretty deep into the playoffs this year. Here you see quarterback George Bivens quickly hands off, back out over midfield and back in to... Blue Jays territory that time, the ball carrier Scott Thomas. And Thomas gets it down to about the, uh, well, just a little bit beyond the 48, almost the 47, a fourth down. And the clock down now to a minute 50 left to go. Economy Township is putting the starters back in. This isn't to run a square up or anything. They just do not have enough confidence. Special teams special wise. Special teams wise. You're, you never want to put your JV team in there. Although, uh, is that, uh, yeah, that is Mock, I guess, in there to kick. It looks like him. Yes, it is. Nope, actually, no, actually, it it's nope. uh, Kyle Smyak. Yep. And uh, uh, taken there by uh, Dalton Uncafer. Uncafer eventually is taken out of bounds at the 31. I'm sure I blew that name, right? Yeah, I think the, you probably did. Yeah, I think you did. Smyach? Smyach. I think they call it Smyach. In the Forest Hills area, they call it Smyach, so we'll go by that. And speaking of uh, Forest Hills, that's where the game of the week will be next week. Yeah, Penn Camry at Forest Hills. And the Rangers were really, they were down last week. I think they're going to bounce back. That should be an interesting game with Coach Ernie Fetzer at Penn Camry. Timeout called here by the Blue Jays. Time for us to remind you about picking up a DVD copy of tonight's game. How do you do that? Well, there's a phone number to call. There you see it, 814-534-8435. Call that to get a copy of tonight's Sports Fever 
Television Network Game of the Week between the Blue Jays and the Indians. Make sure your family and friends don't miss a minute of the big game with a copy of the telecast on the Sports Fever Television Network. Call 814-534-8435. There you see a very reasonable price for a DVD, just $20. You'll get to see all the action in its entirety. Well, yes, you can do a critique of the, the people on here. Dave Shan's a veteran, but I'm relatively new on this TV stuff, a real novice. Uh, you, you've done a great job, and it's been great to have you here because, oh, uh, I mean, you know, as a coach, I have not been a coach. I've been a broadcaster all my life, so you have an insight in the game that I don't. Oh, and a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, but you've been around the game for a long time. When did you start actually out at St. Francis with the basketball games? And that's probably Well, like with 70s. basketball, I'm going back to like 1977. 70. Okay. Uh, yeah. Actually, Dave McGarrity's first season as head okay, coach yeah, with the Red Flash. Going way back. Dave's now up at the, the head coach at the U.S. Military Academy. Yes, and uh, your ball carrier is Anthony LaRue. And Anthony uh, picks up a couple yards there and down to just about a minute left to go in the football game. And, and I should say that's a women's basketball coach. Yes. Dave McGarity is women's basketball coach. Uh, Jamie, uh, let's see, um, you're the University of Pittsburgh coach. Jamie, Jamie Dixon. Dixon. Dixon's his, uh, his sister. His sister Maggie was there yeah. and passed away at very young age. Oh, very tragic goodness. thing. And Dave took over there. Uh, yeah. He was an assistant to her. All right, there's the handoff to LaRue once again. He gets out over the 40 to about the 41-yard line. So Anthony getting a couple carries here as the clock winds down. Under 33 seconds now left to go in the football game. And a valiant effort by the Blue Jays. Yes, they did. They, they really put forth a great effort. Uh, Steve Ling just didn't have the, the blocking today. And it was just one of those things that you had a very good defense by Conema Township, and they just weren't able to, to get the blocks on them. And they, they, they played an outstanding game today, the D, both Township, both offensively and defensively. Made a few mistakes. There's a guru. He's going to have a first down as he carries the ball uh, out over the uh, first down yardage marker. And uh, let's see, I do want to try to find my thank yous here because we have so many people to thank uh, as far as this football game goes. And... Uh, Ah, that's on that. That's clipped in with these ones. There you have it. The uh, clock has run out. That is your final score. Conema Township 35, Conema Valley 6. By the way, we would like to thank Bob Biner and the Conema Valley School District for accommodating tonight's telecast. Executive producer is Gordon Blaine of the Sports Fever Television Network. Your producer director is Greg Banks from Atlantic Broadband. Associate producer in graphics, Karen Sida from Atlantic Broadband. The audio by Don Thursby. Video replay, Anthony Mayako. Camera operators, Dave Rummel and Tom Concannon. Where's Mike's name? Why is a Mike's name here? Jeez. Uh, we had uh, Steve Voitko, and Steve was here in spirit, but uh, Mike Belmar is actually our big cameraman up there up high today, so thanks, Mike. And Steve will be back with us next week for you camera fans. Special thanks to Atlantic Broadband for the remote broadcast facilities. And once again, the final score is Conema Township 35, Conema Valley 6. For That's Hugh Conrad and the Sports Fever TV Network crew, I'm Dave Shannon saying join us next week when Penn Cambria travels to Forest Hills for the game of the week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Thanks for watching tonight, and good night, everybody.